What's happening, lids and ladettes? It's Adam here. And Dan, before we start this week's episode, we've got to tell you that we are going for Christmas number one with our original song, written and sung lead vocal by our very own Finley Kulavuz. It's called Lord Has Gone. It's going to be Christmas number one. You can pre order it right now on iTunes and on Amazon Music. And on top of that, we've got a little documentary coming out on Friday, the 10th of December, showing you the entire record day at the Motor Museum Studios in of appeal that's exclusively going on patreon and it's another one of our specials to add to the lock-ins the live show the last dance we are building up this back catalogue of amazing patreon specials to go on top of the patreon exclusives that we do every week if you like me and adam on this podcast if you love this pod you get an extra hour and a half plus every wednesday as part of the patreon deal for as little as three pounds a month which is the price, the price of, of a fancy coffee or something? Hey, a fancy and fucking coffee. And you get early access to public episodes, up to 48 hours early access. Sign up now at patreon.com slash pod and enjoy this week's episode because we've already recorded it and I don't have to tell you, it's going to be a belter. Defo. What's happening, man? <laughs> what have you been up to? Yeah, not much. Yeah. I've just been uh, down the homeless shelter <laughs> taking all the food off them. I just bummed a dog. <laughs> I've been like, you know, um, you know the, the you know the NSPCC, yeah, that kids charity. I've just been going there pissing on the kids, me. That's yeah, what yeah. I've been up to. Like but, you, you know, all, like you always do. Yeah, Ed. yeah, but like it doesn't matter, does it? Because like if we get caught, we'll just go. Oh, well, we're doing that Christmas song for charity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No one's gonna get us in trouble because of that Christmas song that everyone's buying. I wonder why I've gone for Elton's voice, being like, yeah, 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 totally, lads. Yeah. All right, everyone. I'm Elton John. I bum dogs. We know dogs. you're Elton John. Of you're talking about your chin, Elton John. I would wave. I would. I'm wave. introducing <laughs> myself. Have you never podcasted, Ed? You fucking ginger nonce. Why are you talking about your chin, Elton? What? <laughs> Why are you talking about your chin? <laughs> because I know how shit that's gonna sound. <laughs> I. He sounds like. He's wearing Ed Sheeran's <laughs> face post the murder of Ed Sheeran. I hope this video never gets out. He puts the lotion in the basket. I, I loved the Downing Street party last year. <laughs> <laughs> that me and you sung at. Yeah, I had a great time there. Yeah, it was great, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Candle in the wind. I dropped all the bangers. Rocket man. Yeah. And this shite. By the way, how, how's the uh, the puppy breeding farm where we abuse all the dogs? No, I how, how's that going? I drowned all them cunts. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I drowned them all. The fucking pedigree chum cost shitloads. Good job we're untouchable. <laughs> yeah. Illuminati us, lads. Good job no one can ever tell us what to do. Because we are Ed Sheeran and Elton John. <laughs> And just, we do just, what the fuck re- we want. Is that what we do when we're chatting? We yeah. just remind each other. Do you know what, Ed? You're fucking right. We are Elton John and Ed Sheeran. We I hope, always say it, don't we? I hope this video never gets out, me. <laughs> Imagine if Polish. this gets out and people find out that we've been trafficking women <laughs> Imagine this. For, for the international sex trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but white ones, all right. <laughs> Imagine um, if they find out we've been shipping women off to be <laughs> to be fucked in the ass against their will. We're getting so much trouble. Wow, on the last one. Uh, <laughs> wow, on the last one. I'm just saying, like, it's quite bad what we've been doing, isn't <laughs> it? Sheeran's, Ed Sheeran's the new Jose <laughs> Maxwell. I fucking love Epstein Island. Ed, why do you look Polish? What, me? <laughs> yeah, you. Why do I look Polish? Is that what you think Polish people look like? <laughs> no, the sun. <laughs> it's because I was recently in Poland. That's what it is. I was recently in Poland getting women, <laughs> getting women to sell to to uh, to, to the sex sla- slave trade. <laughs> and that's why you look Polish because you're in Poland. Is that how that works? Yeah, you yeah, know, like yeah, when yeah. you go on holiday to Spain and you come back with a bit of a tan, you look a bit more Spanish. Right. I've been to Poland, so I come back looking a little bit more Polish. Uh, yeah, should we should we uh, close this out with our Christmas shite song that no one should buy? Oh, I can't believe people are buying that shit. Are you, are you I can't believe, and if you play it backwards, it tells them everything we've done against the law for years. Right. If you play it back and it goes, we sell women and, and we murder dogs. all the dogs. We drown the dogs on <laughs> Pedo Island. Yeah. I took all the dogs to uh, Pedo Island. I've Pedo got Island. 
Unpaid parking ticket. <laughs> That's too far, that. Um, ge- ge- genuinely, I'd love to see us sing our Christmas song. Yeah. You know the Elton John, Ed Sheeran one that yeah. you wrote? That we the definitely one, know, don't we? So, ready? The, the, after one, three. The, the one that we stole from an independent <laughs> struggling artist. Yeah. Ready? Because Be- I've definitely them, heard it. Ready? Before we murdered him in cold blood. <laughs> And wiped his entire family <laughs> off the face of the earth so that no one could catch us. That song, the, the one we've released for Christmas saying it's for charity, but really it's just to fund our sex slave business, which is currently struggling due to the impact of COVID and Brexit. <laughs> You're trying to get sympathy for your sex slave business? Imports are a fucking nightmare. Can't the- get any street horse through the borders. <laughs> All my street horse are in Dover. I can't believe people have fallen for it. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God that we, we we look set to beat that Have A Word podcast, which, by the way, I've listened to, and it's fantastic. You like it? I love it. You want it might to. be the funniest podcast in the world. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. fantastic. And I, do you know what? I think all sex slavers enjoy Have A Word. Do you know what? They, like, the lads working there, they're really good eggs, and everyone <laughs> says how sound they are, and they're good in bed, and they've all got massive willies. And do you know what? I, I've got respect for them. Obviously, I'll never say that publicly because <laughs> they're no, our no, rivals. No. But at the end of the day, they're better than we are. They've never sold a woman into sex slavery. No, for they've a never while. drowned Not a dog, a and they've paid all their parking tickets as of this morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, two of them are true. <laughs> right, let's sing our let's sing out to, uh, the song that we wrote. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Kill the dogs, kill the dogs, enslave all the women Women at Christmas. (laughs) Bum the dogs to death, enslave all the women and children. Never pay your parking tickets at Christmas. At Christmas time, we sell women into sex slavery and we drown all the dogs. Drown the dogs, drown the dogs. Sell the women into sex slavery at Christmas time. What's that? (laughs) That's all the puppies about to go in the water. That's the sound of reindeers delivering our latest batch of whores. (laughs) 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 Fuck (laughs) you. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, Ed, you little fucking. I dogs. don't even like Christmas, me. <laughs> you- I fucking hate Christmas. Do you know what I do on Christmas Day? I have a chicken balty. <laughs> out of out of disrespect. Two. <laughs> and do you know what I what else I do? Yeah. I go round and especially if it's been snowing, I try and get rid of all the snow so the kids <laughs> don't have any fun. How do you how do you melt it? Ed? <laughs> what? How do you melt it? I I for a period of weeks just I boiled dogs. several kettles. All oh, right. <laughs> I thought I thought it was going to involve dogs or street horses. No, they they're useless when it comes to melting snow. They're just good for drowning and hey. selling into slavery. <laughs> the point is, hey, buy our record if you support all of these things. But if you don't, I'd try some you know another record like Laura's Gone. Yeah. I yeah, love that Lord has gone song. It's an absolute. It's better than anything. Hey, yeah, ever, you wouldn't say that publicly. It's better would you? than anything I've ever written. That thinking out loud shite that I put out a few years ago. <laughs> it's got nothing on Lord has gone. <laughs> but luckily, we are we're we're bigger than the pop industry. Me and you. Yeah, yeah. And, not, and literally untouchable. Do you know what I mean? Can we see more of that song? <laughs> Fucking Christmas. It's Let's have a sex slave Christmas. Christmas. Sex slaves sell them into slavery. Christmas. Sex slaves. And drown all the dogs. 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 Right, I'm, I'm off. I'm off. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon, mate. See you later, mate. <laughs> are you got? Are you going dogs around now or horse selling? I'm just. I'm just gonna go down these stairs. Okay. Are you getting off? What? Are you getting off? No, I'm. I'm. I'm waiting round because I don't think Dan wants to do the whole episode with Polish Ed Sheeran. I, I'm, I'm waiting round me. My my uh, my bus isn't for a while. 
<laughs> yeah, you're still getting the buzz, sir. What? <laughs> you're still getting the buzz. Only so I can judge the people sat on it. What, for future sex slavery? Yeah. <laughs> Weigh them up. Right, I'm off. Get on me. Oh. You know. Oh, my God, by the way. Go all that crack we sold. <laughs> To who? The kids? <laughs> to the kids. Yeah, it's yeah. killed most of them, so thank fuck for that. Oh, dead crack kids. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Bought a velvet tuxedo yesterday. I heard about this. Me too. Yeah. I've been uh, drying up my pussy ever since. Yeah. Sexy. Um, Why are you buying velvet tuxedos, and what is this gala of which you speak? We're going to a gala on New Year's Eve with our esteemed ladies, Sarah and Sam. Steamy. Um, Esteemy. So we've bought Esther. Uh, matching black velvet tuxedos. Yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> we well, just, we've got to accent them differently, so I'm going with a green accent. He's going with a green bow tie, green. and I'm probably going with a red one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because Sam's probably changing to a red dress now. Oh, I'm sorry, because um, we're oh. green. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. It's good that you didn't go colour tuxedos because then everyone's thinking dumb, well, we, were dumb, gone, we were looking for pink and blue but they're so hard to find yeah no yeah. that's actually where what was what we wanted you wanted to go dumb and dumber well it wasn't going to be it was going to be classier than that oh, i saw a video of those guys seeing each other uh like a tv show and just like fucking about and getting on it's really cute um, jim, jim carrey comes across as dead sound he's also like weird. either bang on the money or crazy isn't he his no. body's not his, and that like, you live nice in. Nice little bit of both. Yeah. And who's yeah. the other one? Jeff Daniels. Who's Jeff Daniels? Paul Daniels' cousin. He's oh. Paul Daniels' cousin. Isn't yeah. he dead now, Paul Daniels? Yeah, but Jeff's still alive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> facts. Straight facts. <laughs> just Google them yourself. We don't need to. <laughs> don't Google them, just believe them. So the Met Gala in Liverpool... Essentially. Because I can't hear Gala without thinking Met Gala now for some reason. It's uh, I think you should have blacked up. Like well, it is a black tie Kim. dinner, so I was gonna black up, Carl was gonna tie up. Oh, no, do do the full Kim Kardashian. Was was gonna gonna tie. She looked like she'd got fucking <laughs> lost in her own curtains, didn't she? She was like fully blacked. Oh, I know what you mean. And she yes. blacked out a dog as no, well. I, I was gonna darken my skin in the traditional sense of blacked up and oh, Carl was no. going to pretend to be from Thailand. Thailand. I'm just going to have to stop you there. That would be horrifically racist. It would, yeah. Isn't that that's what why we didn't do it? All oh, right, all right, cool, cool. We didn't Just, yeah, yeah, cool. Just wanted to let you know that I don't think that'd be allowed. Yeah. But if you, you know, get yourself lost in a black fucking bedding sheet. We're going to look at it. Is the end of it. Right, okay. We're going to look yeah. fucking gorgeous. There was a pair of pants that Carl put on. So there's a couple of things that happened yesterday. We went... Shop. So we bought the with his ass. Oh, yeah. That's wait. the thing. Big mama. So do you know when the way salespeople, especially in high end suit shops, are on like commission, aren't they? I like, have no idea. Never been in one. Never bought one. Go on. But they they really because they get very few customers. They're always quiet. They're part of their set commission, so they're a lot more overzealously friendly when you go in. So they're like, oh, hi, sir. How can I help you? What, you want that shirt in blue? I'll go and get that right for you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you yeah. like a coffee? Sit down, have dip? a beer. We are fucking, you're yeah. all right. Right. <clears throat> so so it's, there's like two ends of the scale. Primark, yeah. which yeah. is just a fucking jumble sale. Yeah. yeah. And then, and this is like two customers a month. Yeah. But and they we spend were those two grand. customers. Right, okay. Yeah, but we bought, Carl bought a shirt in the end, <laughs> and that was it. But we tried on every jacket they had every shirt they had and Carl tried on a few pairs of pants and this woman was being so friendly but she really needed this sale because Carl tried on a pair of pants in his size I've got a massive ass. yeah like if you've seen my ass, you've seen it I but mean it's remember? the second time we've mentioned Kim Kardashian but you've got well, for, for a 29 year old bloke yeah do you you've remember got quite a badonka donk do you yeah. remember the picture of Kim Kardashian that broke the internet where, where it, it ass looks like a shelf I remember that yeah right. visually yeah you could have Put a cup of tea on Carl's ass in these pants and bummed them and not spilled a drop. Yeah, yeah. He it just, was, it was ridiculous. If you want to book afternoon tea, just have it at Carl's <laughs> ass. I stood with into your, the your, dressing what, room. What? I stood into the dressing room and you could. I left my horse hanging out and you could see it. But this woman was like, "I think they look great," and I burst out laughing and I was like, "Look him in the eyes now and tell him those pants fit." Do it right now. She she couldn't. She, she was crying. <laughs> she was <laughs> screaming, laughing. Like in this high end shop where there's supposed to be there's supposed to be like you know the guards outside Buckingham Palace with the mad hats and they're like even if you just piss on them they have to be like well I guess I'm covered in piss. They're supposed to be like that. 
In- <laughs> hey, just little, put a little pin in that. That's not how that works. What do you mean? If you piss on one of them, there yeah. will be a response. Yeah, guns. but not by them. No, yeah, by them. No, they're never not allowed s- to move. Have yeah. you never seen the one? Have you never seen them push someone away? No. Yeah, there's can, loads of videos. No, of like, you can get your dick out and slap it across the face and they have to take it. It's the law. Yeah, that's the absolute law. You will get butted with a gun. What are they called? Beef cookers. Beef eaters. Bo- beef cookers. Yeah. yeah, they're called beef cookers. <laughs> You're mashing up so many different things. Who are the beef eaters? Now I'm taking the piss. Oh, that's the Tower of London. Yeah. That's the beef eaters. They're Just the, the Queen's, Queen's Guard. Guard. Yeah. Queen's Guard. Yeah, but if you piss on them, they will react. I, I don't think that's true. Right, cool. Well, let's do the Patreon special where you piss on the Queen's Guard. <laughs> Booked. <laughs> Can't wait. Next year's going to be a busy old year, isn't it? <laughs> you pissing on people at Buckingham Palace, having a fucking table tennis match with a Paralympian. I can't wait for any of it. It's going to be great. Uh, so she was like, literally She's supposed like, to be all prim and proper. She's supposed to be like, yeah, we'll get that jacket. But she sale, couldn't. Sale, she was crying laughing. She was screaming. Like, but so was the manager. Because you're ma- a because my ass. Because I was like, you cannot tell him. Because everything else fit. They fit his legs really well. You could just see a bit of cock. You know, like when pants are on and you get mm. oh, just a cock. bulge. Well, we tried cock pants on, didn't we? We did try cock, cock pants, pants on. on. In Marks and Spencers, they fit everywhere, but there's oh, oh, the cojones. Oh, the Hen- Henry VIII sort of. Yeah. It looked like I had that cup in my kecks. Right, cool. Yeah. Cool. It was fucking massive. But this gaff, honestly, if he'd have farted, he'd have ripped these pants. And it wouldn't have needed... <laughs> It would have Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, genuinely. And she went, I think they fit. I think they're great. And I lost it. I was like, look him in the eyes right now. And she went, <laughs> and just lost their mind. And then the manager lost his mind. So he couldn't even tell her off. Because this guy who's in his little suit, like, oh, yes, uh, Melanie, we, we treat our customers with respect here. He lost it as well. It was fucking great. Right. Yeah, I got Are it. you all right with it? Because, you know, so. you've just, you know, it yeah. is... It is one of those things that we can all have a laugh about, but it's... Well, I laughed. I came out right. with these are nice, aren't It's not like then... a syndrome, is it? It's not like he's got big arse syndrome. I turned around and went, look at my arse. And she... It's a funny one when a man has got a, uh, like, a large arse. Because it's like, with women now, it's like, oh, it's the renaissance for fat-ass women, isn't it? If you've got a big arse... I remember in the 90s, people were... Everyone wanted to look like Pamela Anderson. That was the weird, stereotypical, like, isn't that amazing? Now, if you've got a badonk, everyone's like, oh, tri- fucking mendus. What's really weird but with as me a and a man, it's a... Is it... Girls like her. Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. Ladies love... A big ass. The humps. What's really weird with me and Carl, we are the exact same size and everything at the minute, but we're not the same size people. Yeah. Because yeah. I've got like a, a chubby top, which is quite like, <clears throat> my, my, I've got a chubby top. So that counts out the fact that he's a little bit longer than me. Yeah, grown man not as chubby. Yeah, I've and then he's got a big ass. But like, I because I have my pants quite high, they go sort of on my belly. So we were the same size <laughs> pants, the same size shirt. Yeah. And same the same size shirt. jacket, but we're not the same shape. And it's fucking weird. Yeah. With the yeah, same you've got, different order. You've got large legs, he's got a large top. He, he's got medium legs and you've got a medium top. Yeah. 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 Um, Phenomenal. How much are we talking? I don't want to. Well, here's the thing. How much are we dropping there? Enough. Can I guess? Can I guess? Can I do a little? Our jackets were different prices. And I'll tell you why in a second. All right. Uh, I'm going to start the bidding up. Can I do guess your suit full cost? Well, I haven't bought my pants yet. Right. You just bought the jacket. Bought the jacket and a shirt. Jacket and a shirt. Can I guess the jacket? Yeah. 300. Two pound off you are. It's two nine eight. Two nine eight. Wow. That was a little mine was a little cheaper because tell them. So we went to the first shop. Can't, can't which was the high end suit I, shop. I, I can't even speak about it. <laughs> and they had such a limited range that the only one that fit us was the black one. And we were like, Do you know what? We're gonna go look elsewhere, try and find pink and blue. We went all around Liverpool, completely forgot that the original shop had the black ones that we would have worn and then spent the rest of the day scouring Liverpool for black velvet jackets because we decided we were both going to wear black. So we went and shopped. Do you know when you're shopping? I don't know whether you ever get this, but you sort of, in your head, you remember picturing things in shops being like, oh, they'll definitely have it. Like I, in my head, I was like, Zara will have it. They always have an array of velvet blazers. It's like a little blur in your memory, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. But you're yeah. like, I'm sure they've got that. And then you go in Zara and you're like, have you got any velvet blazers? And they're like, we've literally never stocked that ever. And you're like, hmm, that's strange. And then you go to... Hey, I am absolutely sure. Can you check the stock? 
No, we've never done it. Fuck. It, it's it's like you convince yourself, oh, they, they do sell that, but then they fucking don't. So we were going everywhere, including to like Slater's, which is a suit and jacket shop. Nothing. And then we went... I've been to Slater's. They're like the wedding rental yeah. kind of yeah. place. <clears throat> but they have got... They do have... They had one option, but it was just the literally last on the rack and it was too small for either of us. And then we went to John Lewis just as a little gamble and they had one, but they had... And it fit both of us perfectly. But they had one. So we were like, right, neither of us can get this. Because what if... Because we weren't... We were either both going to wear velvet or we were both just going to wear a suit. So we were like, we can't buy this not knowing whether we're going to get another one elsewhere. Right. So we hid it. You know the old stash and come back? So you get your, like, a, a, a velvet jacket off one rack and you go and put it with a load of, like, Wrangler t-shirts elsewhere. Hide it right at the back. Yeah. yeah. So we did that. Put that there. And then I went to... Reese, someone recommended we goes to Reese. Fuck me, you've been around the town, haven't you? Oh, this is about five hours. This is Liverpool one. We got into town twice. at eleven a.m. yesterday. We got into town at eleven a.m. yesterday, and we left town at four p.m. And all we bought was velvet blazers and shirts. And he bought a pair of pants. You had lunch somewhere. We had, we had lunch. Yeah. A very quick Nando's. But I went to Reese, and like we, someone recommended we go there. I was like, oh, of course, why don't we try Reese? We're walking past in the window. Velvet black, black blazer, Pow. perfect, Pow. beautiful, and everywhere we've been trying stuff on, we were size forty six short or reg. Carl could get away with a regular because he's a bit taller, but we wanted forty six short. So we go in and it was like well, seventy two ass. Looked around the shop in Reese. It was like, uh, where's that velvet blazer from the window? She went, that's the last one. It's like right, great. It's like what about the the other store, the other Reese on the other side? Sam, will they have more? She was like. Now, they've been calling us three times a day, asking us what size that is, because people keep going into their store looking for velvet blazers. Yeah, I think there's like a velvet blazer convention or something <laughs> going on in Liverpool. Um, so that is literally the last one in Liverpool and maybe in the UK. And I was like, right. I went, what size is this? She goes, it's a 42 short. I was like, it's going to be too small. She went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went, I'll just try it for a laugh. It fits like a slightly tight glove. Like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> It fits <laughs> like a glove that is a little <laughs> bit too small, if you know what I mean. It's it's not too small, but I would after a meal I wouldn't be able to do the button up. I can do the button up and it looks fine at the minute. You look beautiful. But after a meal, it would have to be open. So it's two hundred and ninety eight quid, and I was like, that's a lot of money for something I'm probably going to wear once. So I went, yeah, I'm well, you this. have to wear that more than once though. Well, she, what she said to me, she was like, uh, "What's it for?" And I was like, "Oh, it's for New Year's Eve." And then I went, "How much is this?" She was like, two hundred ninety eight pounds." I was like, "Right." And then I went to her as I'm getting back in store. <laughs> and in the most, she gave me such a look. So I went to her, just checking. What is the <laughs> refund policy on these things? And she went, mm -hmm. 28 days. And you could sit, like, I couldn't hide the joy in my face. I was like, oh, so that'll take us, you know, like 14 days into January, I suppose. That's, uh, that's really interesting, that. I was like, great, great to know, just in case. That nod was you. I was like, it, the thing is, my girlfriend has to approve it. So if she doesn't like it, I might not end up wearing it. She was and like... Honestly, she gets very judgmental on <laughs> New Year's Day. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you know what, Adam? Now I've seen you wear that. I don't like it. But I you know what I'm going to do? Go back. And I'm going to take it back on New Year's Day. Or, don't. Or, I'm absolutely taking it back. Are you going to go in wearing it? And go, I don't want this, actually. I haven't worn it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen. Unless <laughs> there's so many things going on here, you've basically bought that that whole thing like it fits just a little bit tight. You're gonna have a, you're gonna have to have a disciplined Christmas. Here. I am having a disciplined Christmas. I'll call for you, babe. <laughs> but what are you drinking at this gala? Like yogurt. Yeah, <laughs> which has to be dead gay. Alcoholic yogurt. Alcoholic yogurt. It's the alcoholic I mean, yogurt. That yogurt. sounds pretty gay, doesn't it? We're getting velvet suits and they match, and we're drinking yogurt all have night. You never heard of the alcoholic yogurt have gala? You never before. It's a biannual tradition. Is that but twice a year? I think it's a bisexual years? tradition. It well, is, yeah. Right. It's every year, but it's just full of bisexual people. What? <laughs> it's twice a year. Or is it every other? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm telling you right now, you are not going to be able to return that. Why? There's so many things that are going to lead you to not return it. Your general admin skills the fact that are can't be asked. This is number oh, one. Oh fucking hell! Did it say January fourteenth? I know it's April, <laughs> but I'm not good with dates and times. Oh, I've had loads on. Here's where you're wrong, now, Matthew. <laughs> Here's where you're wrong. 
So I go to New York on the 4th of January, right? Oh, so you go have your shit together. And here's the thing. I come back from New York on the 12th of January. Yeah? Uh, Land on the 13th. Okay. We're recording the podcast on the 13th. And I'm having my birthday party on the 14th. Oh, yes. Can't right? Wait. Cannot wait. So I, before I go to New York on either the 2nd or 3rd of January, I have got to go shopping to buy my birthday outfit. I've got to go and buy my birthday suit. Right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that jacket back and use the money from that to buy me birthday suits. And oh, then right. I'm going to do the same thing again and get a Valentine's Day outfit. Um, okay, Mr. O, have you worn it out last night? Uh, no. Is this yoghurt? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, if there's yoghurt on that, then I definitely want to bring it back. Oh, yeah. Can't be, <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. be selling people jackets with yoghurt on them. Yeah, there was yoghurt all over it. <laughs> it's almost like it's been a biannual bisexual gala or something. <laughs> Alcoholic yogurt. Well, I don't know what they've been drinking. Alka yogurt. Alka yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> the all natural Al Qaeda. Alka yogurt. <laughs> Probiotic Al Qaeda. Yeah, I'm gonna take it back. You're not. <laughs> you am. You're not. I, le, you're not. <laughs> I am. Le, you're I, not. I don't. You're not. <laughs> you're gonna be hungover. Where's the receipt now? Oh. Where's the receipt now? In the bag. Is yeah. It? Yeah. In yeah. it. Where's the bag? In my house. Cool. All right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted that fucking yogurt stain shit. You are gonna wake up. There's gonna be chips in one pocket. <laughs> fucking chili sauce here. Yogurt everywhere. But isn't that more of a reason to take it back? Carl's pants are gonna be split. <laughs> Nothing's going bad. Don't worry about it. Get a new fucking dirty suit. Don't worry about it. Get on me. <laughs> I'm gonna take. Are they open on New Year's Day? I'm gonna take it back in a second. Mind games. Hmm? You, we're in your mind. Yeah. It's like I didn't wear it, mainly because it's covered in yogurt. <laughs> how, much <are> you sp- <laughs> how much are you spending on clothes at the moment? Like, you see, like there's a lot of outfits going on. There's a lot Any. of... That's, oh, mate, I'm very excited about... Uh, anyway, I'm probably not. I'll yeah, wait till it happens. Yeah, yeah. We get some sent some, sent some stuff. That's yeah. nice. But your big outfit is like, you're going for it. For New Year's Eve or for me birthday? For both. How yeah. much? Do you, is this a big... Th- it's 30th no. birthday, you know? I like treating myself to clothes, but... yeah, oh, no, I buy clothes a lot because I'm, I'm a bit frivolous with my money because I've got no genuine responsibilities. There's no mortgage. There's no children that I know of. Um, also, things are going good. And also, I, I don't buy ridiculously expensive clothes. I buy a lot of yes, cheap clothes. No, you don't. Talking shit. No, I'm not. How much you've spent on shoes this month? That shoes don't count. I oh, know you're not wearing <laughs> shoes. Anymore. Plus, I'm taking them back. That's the alternative, David Bedil. But have you got yogurt in a shoe? <laughs> got a drink as well. All right, receptacles. That was shoe. really good. Though. Shoe it was bomb. fantastic. That one. Yeah. And he missed it. I said shoes don't count. That's the alternative, David Bedil. Because he wrote a book called Jews Don't Count, I'm, and it's I, about even if I'd have heard it, I wouldn't have got it. It's a play on words. The Jews don't count thing because, first of all, they're like, well, there's a lot of anti Semitism in the country and we need to talk about it because Jews do count, but they don't count in the conversation about racism. But also, there's a long historical stereotype that Jews are accountants, in which case they would have to count. There's layers to well, my I'm shoes glad, don't count. Joke. I'm glad we explained it all. <laughs> we're getting cigars as well. I'm glad we. Oh, we're, we're, getting, getting, cigars. we're getting cigars. Good, good, good. We are getting cigars. I, I've never smoked in my life and I'm probably going to have an emphysema, but. Looks sick in the picture. We're gonna get. Have cigars. you just finished your A levels or something? What's going on? Like <laughs> what? I feel, <laughs> it's I feel it's like you're bringing A level ball energy to this fucking New Year's. It's been Eve a goal. massive year in both of oh. our lives. <laughs> yeah, it's been a big year in both our lives. And next year, you be fucking hate smoking, Carl. Yeah, but he loves looking sick. I'll you, take one puff, cough loads. You won't even light it. You're going to oh, walk oh, around mate. like a young Dave Perkins. I'll be like fucking um, Shug Knight. I'll have like six of them. Yeah. I'm going to smoke three cigars at once. <laughs> you can't <laughs> wear a mask. Are you going to smoke three cigars at once? I couldn't possibly wear a mask. I've got terrible asthma. <laughs> I fucking love biannual bisexual. <laughs> Get on my yogurt. <laughs> Um, can we try smoking cigars? Ah, we won't be able to do it in here. But when Bill Burr oh, talks about cigars, oh, when something. Bill Burr 
and well, he smoked the Bert Kreischer well, and everything, he? they talk about cigars. It makes me want to... And I, my granddad used to smoke cigars in the garden and he'd like take himself off so he didn't have to listen to my nana and my mum witter on or listen to me and my sister fuck about and annoy each other. So he'd go out and he'd just like pot around the garden and then he'd come in and there'd be like a smell of cigar smoke. So I fucking love my granddad. That w faint smell of cigars, I love it. You yeah. know when you've got a nice sort of connection to a smell? I quite like the idea of getting some, not shit, but like getting some Cubans and having yeah. a try. Yeah, that's what I'm going to order for New Year's Eve. And we're going to smoke them on the docks. Oh, we are as well. <laughs> <laughs> Two B's and a D. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, General Studies. <laughs> Get on my yoghurt. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get in A-levels? Two B's and a D. Did you? Yeah. I got it. Hang on, let me just check. It's literally I accidentally did my A level A level results. I got an A, a C, and an E. Spells ace, which is like if anything impossible. <laughs> a C and an E. I aced them. Shows that you're bright and shows that you, if you're in the mood, don't try. Well, well the I... A was in maths and the E was in fair the maths. What? Yeah. I don't understand how that works. Then, as in, he couldn't be asked. It yeah. was actually. I'll do maths, but I'm not going that extra mile. Fuck well, that. I took it because I was like, well, I'm going to do maths at uni, so there's no point me doing fucking biology at A-level because I'll never care. I might as well just do... Because fair the maths is second year and third year uni-level mathematics, and you can do it at A-level so that by the time you get to university, it's a, it's a walk in the park because you already know the basic theories of everything you're doing. But so when you do your A-levels, you get five hours of each lesson a week, don't you? Yes. Right? So with further maths, you only got two a week and you have to do the other three of your own accord at home, which for me, especially at 16, 17 and 18, was an absolute car crash. Because of course I didn't do it at home. Of course I just played FIFA, went and played fuzzy and, you know, had the occasional fingering session. That's all I was doing at that age. So... Did you wear velvet suits? Never got gone. I knew all I need As long as I got an A in maths and did okay in psychology enough to get a C or a B or whatever, which I did, I got a C. And I knew before I even took the exam, if I got like 30% in the exam, I was going to get the, the I was going to get at least a C because I'd done the coursework and got A's in them all. I was like, I don't even need to revise for psychology. I'll just fucking take the tap in. And the further maths one, I just, I couldn't do it. It's too the, much maths. It, it was just, it was just, I had to have some auton autonomy at home and I just didn't have it. So funny that you were thinking about the degree while you were doing your A-levels and then you got to the degree and pied it. After a week. I didn't go to a single lecture. Do you know what I did with A-levels? I just went, oh, I can choose subjects that I want to do rather than like maths, history, English. So I did theatre studies, politics and media studies. I did A-levels that you couldn't have done at GCSE. To be fair, you can do theatre studies GCSE. You just couldn't at my school. There wasn't a drama department at my school. So I got there... And my college years, I fucking loved. I loved being free of the spanners who held you back at school. You know, like, just all the kids who clearly didn't want to be there and had behavioural issues. They're like, oh, we're free of them. The quad bike kids. And all, yeah, That's what we used to call them. Quad bike kids. And then all, you had teachers that were like, if you dicked around and didn't do the work, they were like, what a fucking idiot you are. You're like, oh, yeah, you don't get shouted at. But you don't do the work. You just, yeah. That's what happened to you. I, you just, that's you, what happened in the first year. Of, that's why me and Carl, me and Carl did three, three years, years of A-levels. And we were clever lads. But that first year. You needed the push and you didn't get it. We yeah, just you, needed the the accountability. Because when like teachers were like, what, you haven't done your own work? Oh, interesting. Cool. Anyway, on with the lesson. We were like, <laughs> fucking stupid bitch. She's, she doesn't care. Because you got school mentality. Going. Yeah. yeah. I used to, I used were you, was it separate? Did you go to a separate college? No, it was the same the thing. Oh, maybe that's school. part of it. Yeah, we just, I'd, I'd sit next to Danny in um, psychology. We sat next to a window in a, it's like a big mansion or thingy. Layfield house. I used to just push all his work out the window. And I could be like, I'm not getting shot after this because she was like, you don't have it. I got an A star and two U's. <laughs> you what? I got an A star and two U's. You might be the only student in the history of education to get an A star and two U's. Yeah. That's almost like if you tried to do it, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. I just like, fuck me. I loved college. Just even thinking about Cardinal Newman was amazing, and it's because I went straight from sixth form 
into uh, straight from school into our sixth form. I think I did religious studies, history and business, and then my mum died, and I was I was there for another month, and then I went off the rails, and I got two proper jobs, and I stayed mates with all my mates that were at sixth form. But I got proper jobs, and I worked in a steel stock holding warehouse for about three months, and scared the shit out of myself. The 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 thing that you probably got over that first year where you're like, oh yeah, you sort of have to do the work. I got it in another way. I got it by working in a job where they were like, yeah, Graham's worked here for 28 years. And Graham was like, <laughs> like he ju- the most depressing thing I've ever seen. So it made me go back to Cardinal Newman. I, I, I signed up to the Catholic college in town and I tried. Like I wasn't fucking brilliant or anything. And I did fuck around and I did some finger incisions. I had something similar to that. it was good for me. Yeah. That year of going, holy shit, is this what not college looks like? Yeah. Fuck that noise. I had something similar to that very recently, but it was sort of the flip of it. It gave me a real sense of gratitude for, like, there's just moments sometimes, isn't there, where, especially with the past year with the podcast and stuff, where you're like, oh, shit, we're doing something really cool here, and we're very lucky to be able to do it, and yeah. you get it with stand-up. I went through the drive through of the Mackies I used to work in, and at the window as a shift manager, was one of my old shift managers, and he's dead sound. I really get on with him really well, and he's happy, as far as I'm aware. He's a happy lad. He likes his job. He likes his life. But I had a moment where I was like, I last worked here 12 years ago, and he was doing that job then, and I thought about how much my life has changed in that 12 years and how he's happy, and I'm very, very happy for him how unhappy I'd be if, I think we've said this before, I love the constant challenge and the leveling up you can do with comedy and podcasting and whatever. The idea of being in the same position for 12 years scares the shit out of me. Same job that, yeah, you basically got a bit stuck. I'm not saying, yeah, we're not speaking for him. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who do jobs like that where you're like, oh God, it's, I've got just, him on Facebook and yeah. he's always happy. Like he's he's got a family and he he talks about them and he, he seems like he's a constantly positive lad. Everything's really positive from him. He, I'm not saying he's unhappy in any way, shape or form. I just know I would be and people are very different. And just seeing that, I was like, wow. His, his day-to-day life is very similar to what it was 12 years ago. And if that was the case for me, I'd be fucking miserable. And I'm so glad that... I'm in a position where it changes every year. Well, you're, you're naturally talented, but the work rate is there. Like I was naturally talented when I was young and I was like, everything will work out because I'm just dead good. I was just a confident kid and everything had worked out. If I tried a little, everything worked great. And then all of a sudden you, my mum died and I was in a fucking weird office job and you're like, oh, not everything's going to work out just because I'm like, I'm not the chosen one. I'm going to actually have to. So those two things did me good. Like, I know you. it's probably revisionist history because at the time it felt like my heart had been ripped out. But my mum died and made me go, oh my God, I, you can just die. And then I looked, there was genuinely a guy called Graham, I'm not making it up, and he'd been there 30 years and he was the most grey person. Not a bad guy, quite sound. Everything about his demeanour, his clothes, his eyes, grey. He just lost the will. And I wouldn't necessarily have become him, but it made me go, oh, I've really got to throw myself at something. And that's why I could never have been Graham or that guy at McDonald's because I'd have gone, I can't keep doing this. Because yeah. if you've lost your mum young, you're like, well, what if I go young? I'm not fucking doing this. At least give it a crack. And and there's those two, I'm not judging anyone who gets stuck in those jobs because you've got responsibility bills or whatever. But I also then... And some people love the routine yeah. and the and the... Like you spoke, you you started coming in here to do editing on extra days because you want more of a routine. Yeah. <clears> some <throat> people thrive off it, and some people are like I know what I do. I get up Monday to Friday, and I go here at this time. And in their own, like even if they've got other problems that are you know they're struggling with or whatever, they're happy with having that routine. And it doesn't matter to them that like they've they've got to a point with their job that that that's where they're going to stay because they're just like yeah it's fine. Doesn't I mean, mean you don't have to challenge yourself though. No, because that routine. But some can people get don't have to challenge themselves. That's all I'm saying. Is some people are just happy to not be challenged and just be like I I, I enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. We're we're different. I constantly need what's next. How do we make this bigger and better? But some people don't. But I I do stand by that man. If there's a thing inside you, it doesn't matter how old, and you're like oh this is not doing it for me. Give something a go, whether it's just on the side or like, that's why I don't judge harshly because it's all right for you going, 
comedy. I've just put everything. You're fucking great at it. I've had a lot of success with stand up, and now we've come together to chat shit and fucking do what we do, and this is going well. There's comics who you, if we were talking privately, you'd be like, fucking bland. They're not great. I also sort of respect them for still doing it. You know, every level of comp, because at least they're not just going, yeah, I'm just clocking into this job that I don't like. At least they're going, yeah, I'm doing that, but I'm also going out on the sort of open mic circuit and doing stand up. Yeah. They're not necessarily getting the success, but at least they're going, fuck, I like this. And I'm really trying at it. It's They've got that outlet. Um, but we've all talked to see those anyway. Looking forward to seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> How can you, ha- like, t- tell me you can sum up, have a word. Because I don't think you can. Because at the start of this episode, Elton John and Ed Sheeran. That was Did an you in- heard about them? That, yeah, that yeah, was an interesting eight minutes. selling women into sex slavery? And you just, here. And just 25 minutes, half an hour later, we're like, yeah, and then my mum died and I did my A-levels. <laughs> <laughs> range. We've got range. We can do all the things. Fucking range. Range. Oh, range rose. That's what I want. Great David Badiljo, though. Apologies for missing it's that. It's really yeah. good. Yogurt. <laughs> what is alcoholic yogurt? Did you just. It's like Yakult with a shot in it. Yeah, essentially. I mean, I did invent it as we were talking about White Russian. Oh, I wonder if anyone's ever done that, put booze in a Yakult. <laughs> I wonder. Carl, can you. <laughs> can I go to the Google? Big time. Hey, na- uh, I don't oh. want to go to the cafe. I want to order in. I want to treat myself right. Yeah. Because I'm on the live show on Friday. Um, I am getting my tits out. I'm going to be having a on tattoo. On Sunday. On Sunday. Scusi. Sunday the 19th. 19th of December, 8 p.m. You can get your live stream tickets at hotwatercomedy.co.uk. And even if you're watching this publicly on Monday the 20th or just afterwards, that live stream ticket is available for a full week. So we had a comment saying, oh, do you have to buy it before? You do not have to buy it before. If you're not going to watch it live on the... If you're going to watch it live as it happens on the night, as you can, and a lot of people, thousands of people are going to be doing that, if you want to be part of that event and see the big announcement we've got, if you want to see that, you need to be watching live on the night and you need to buy your ticket in advance. But you can buy a live stream ticket and watch it as many times as you want right up until 8 p.m., on the 26th of December. And these guys are designing a tattoo for me. So that means I've got to get my top off because I want the tattoo behind me because I'm not letting these fucking animals choose something that I can see every day going, I hate these cunts. So I'm going to be getting my top off. And I've decided, unlike you and your slightly tight-fitting jacket, that I'm going to eat like an absolute pig on Sunday and do full gypsy call-out. Do you want a bit of this? Do you want a little bit of this? Come on, now. No. Cool. So I want Pizza Hut delivered. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fatty Bumbati. Wag Wag Lids need to tell you about NordVPN. Grab NordVPN's holiday season deal by going to nordvpn.com slash have a word. Use code have a word to get up to 73% off your NordVPN plan plus a bonus gift. I love NordVPN. It's uh, an absolute honor to have them on board as a sponsor because... I love telling my laptop that I'm in a different country. And the reason for that is, first of all, you get access to American Netflix by telling that you're in America or Canadian. And the libraries of stuff is just massive over there. But the big one for me, you can watch the footy. You can watch like the footy, like the three o'clock footy in the Premier League all over the holiday season. You can watch it on your laptop because you can just say, hey, I'm in Mozambique, me. And they're showing it in Mozambique. Oh, what, they're showing it in Tunisia today? Are they really? What about Belarus? I'll be in Belarus then. That's what you can do with a VPN. And I love it for that. The footy is the big selling point for me. And if you want a way to watch the footy over the Christmas period while you're visiting your family or at home or whatever, you can do it using NordVPN and just lying about what country you're in. So Great. grab NordVPN's holiday season deal by going to nordvpn.com slash have a word, use code have a word. Get up to 73 fucking percent off NordVPN plan plus. A bonus gift. This is the best sponsor on the planet for me because now I get my VPN for free, but you still have to pay for it. But 73% off, quite a good deal. <laughs> you went big at the end there, didn't you? I did. I'm just flexing. You're loving that non VPN card. I'm sucking your dick, but I'm in Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> Belarusian dick tastes better, especially at Christmas. And it's cheaper. Yeah. That's the gift a Belarusian <laughs> cock. I hope they keep us. <laughs> 
Welcome uh, back, welcome back, welcome back. So I've done some prep. <laughs> it's just so great that, you know, it's obviously our business, we own it together. Uh -huh. And it's important, isn't it? Thanks for doing that prep on my laptop. So yeah. thanks for... <laughs> Thanks for uh, thanks for lending me this laptop last week so that I could spend all week doing prep. Yes, <clears throat> yes. So nice of you then. That is all true. It's a question here from <clears throat> Lolly Badcock. Um, no, this is a question that I've got. Oh my before god! Before I do these ones. <laughs> oh, that's not good, is it? A little cough. Don't even bother. Oh, I'm Rick Cron. Hey, I could literally have it written on my face. I'd still be there on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Danny Super Spreads. I will be there at the live show on Sunday. You can be too, live stream. Speaking oh. of personal protective equipment, um, do you wear the little gloves at a petrol station when you're putting petrol in your car? Am I a paedophile? I wear them. Yeah, because you're a paedophile. You are a paedophile. I'm not. I'm just someone who doesn't like the dinner smell and like petrol. Well, that's everyone in it. <laughs> but I, I forget about uh, Transformers. They don't eat dinner. They always forget about Transformers. Um, yeah, petrol for dinner. Well, they'd love it then. It's like a starter, exactly. And they fill themselves up. Yeah. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> no, I've got wet wipes in the car. I got, I got kids, and I got wet wipes everywhere. I've got wet wipes for children. I've so got do you wet hold the wet wipe car. over the pump? No, I just if. I do it, and I'm like, oh, I've got diesel hand. I yeah. give myself a little wet wipe before I go into the petrol sh to the shop. Is that right? Is that I just don't. I can't put the plastic glove on. I do. Yeah, My hands you don't, smell. though. No, I actually do. He does. Come on. I just don't want my hands to smell like petrol. I haven't got wet wipes in the car because I've, I've been stupid enough to have children. <laughs> Thanks, Lo you so. Lo you so go like, that lives in my head semi-rent-free. He's like, as long as you don't have children. I was like, oh, God, I do. Hope your fucking jokes look after you when you're dying, Loiso. They will, though, technically, because be, he might be a millionaire, and that would have been paid for by jokes, and the money will look after him. Maybe A, maybe no. I might buy, like, if I never have kids, which I'd like to, but if I never do, what? Well, Definitely going to have kids. Yeah, you are going to have kids. Yeah, maybe, probably. But if I don't... Shoot blanks. Then I think by then, let's hope I'm like at least a hundred millionaire. I'm gonna buy a person. Is that a centi millionaire? A what? A centi millionaire, it's called, isn't it? Oh, shut up. I'm gonna buy a person. That sounds nancy, but you sounded thick. Yeah. I'm gonna be a hundred millionaire. A hundred millionaire? A hundred millionaire? I'd, I'd like to be a billionaire, but you know. I know. Just trying to be grounded. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Hasn't bought wet wipes, wants to be a billionaire. Keep going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how you become a billionaire. Well, let me Waste that your money on wet wipes. No? Get a normal wipe and wet it yourself. Save money. Squid a little away. Eventually. Yeah. Billionaire. That's how Bill Gates started. I've, I really put... A, Bill, the Bill, Bill Gates. Gates. There. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Is his first name billionaire? Yes. Written. Second name Gates said. Written billionaire in Gates. The Gates. Billionaire Gates said. Yeah, I'm going to be walking right through those billionaire Gates one day. What is ours? <laughs> no. Oh, like the gates of becoming a billionaire. Right. What's your question? <laughs> you big mong. <laughs> like, I'm just going to buy a person and get them to pretend to love me like a child does. So, like, I'll be like, I'm not going in a home. And they'll be like, no, you're not. I'm going to look after you because they're being paid to do it via a third party company so that it doesn't feel direct. You mean a carer? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Because this is different. By a third party? I'm going to get them to call me dad. Yeah, you'd have to pay extra for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Call me daddy. So my, Ooh, my, my granddad's got to that age where he has to pay someone to go around and like check he's not dead or fallen <laughs> over because me and my sister aren't doing it. <laughs> and she, she comes in. She's very friendly. She's African. So she's like, your granddad is doing very well. And I'm like, is he though? His eyelids have stopped working. She's like, apart from the eyelids. <laughs> They're fucked. Well, yeah, he's doing good. And what she means is, he's not, basically, it's, she, he's not dead. <laughs> so you're going to pay a little bit extra to probably the same company. Yeah. Be like, Adam, although I am a 52 year old mother of three, I love you. No, I'm getting an 18 year old. Uh, 19. Oh, loads better. <laughs> you going to shag them? No. Oh, it's me, kid. It's oh, disgusting. shit, yeah. 
Be like, come on, wipe me off and call me dad. <laughs> How much you pay? Just that? sounds like kinky sex, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, wipe, but wipe no sex and call me dad. There's no sex involved. And still no wet it's wipes. cleanliness. For the white, for the arse wipes. She can, uh, look, if she wants to spend part of her wages on wet wipes. <laughs> more Have you way. run this past Sam, by the way? You know your partner who you're definitely going to marry. Yeah. Have you run this by her? That you're not going to have kids, you're going to have a 19-year-old African employee I haven't who wipes run her arse and her, calls your dad. But, you know, if she's watching, she should be prepared for this. Right, cool. Because hmm. if we don't have kids, I'm, I hope we do, but if we don't, then I'm getting an 18-year-old from... Brixton, and she oh. is wiping my ass and calling me daddy. Why don't you just adopt? What? Why don't you just adopt? Because you can't. Because re- I don't want like a five year old when I'm fucking too ill to wipe my own ass. You're a billionaire though. What? Well, so five year olds? <laughs> if you've got the money, they can do anything. No, but aren't you, you adopting money? before you die in an old? No, I'm <laughs> waiting till then, and I'm getting a fully grown adult who wants a decent paying job. Yeah. To just look after me. It's a carer. Yeah. You're describing a carer. <laughs> you fucking lunatic. You. Li- I'm going to be old. I'm going to have the money, and I'll employ someone to look after me. It's a carer. No, but I want them to worry about me the way they would a parent. <laughs> just pay them more. I am doing. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes it not a carer, though. Right. Because I want an emotional investment. I want to see them cry when I'm get really bad, and when I get a little bit better, I want to see the joy in their eyes where they're like, "Oh, we might make it." That's the money again, isn't it? Like, yeah. oh my god, I'm going to lose this job. This dickhead's overpaying me. Whatever, whatever it's. Oh, I'll get an actress. That'll be better. There we go. There you go. Uh, you know, like when on Cory, it's like, right, we'll sign you Ken Barlow, and you're going to do this for sixty. You're going to get Ken Barlow to wipe your ass when you're old. I'm going to get my own Ken Barlow. You're going to be my Ken Barlow, yeah. a nineteen-year-old Ken Barlow, a nineteen-year-old young, a job for life actor here. Ken you Barlow are my kid from got, Brixton. He wears white socks. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Solid. Just Ken turn, Barlow. Just turn. <laughs> yeah. I just think, give them a job for life. Set them for life. You know what I mean? Pay them more than they would get paid in Hollywood. Like, they get like 14 million a movie, don't they? I'll pay them 14 million a year. But all they have to do is just pretend to be my son slash daughter. If you're a billionaire, you must have to pay a lot more for just everything. Surely. Because they'd be like, fuck off. Actually, they notoriously pay a lot less than the, the general consumer based on taxes because they avoid them, don't they? <laughs> think you should do these questions that you prepped. <laughs> I do don't you think, think you should do these thing. ones. I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I don't see any value in these questions. <laughs> 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 I'm going to pay that carer to murder you. <laughs> it's not a carer. Early. It it's is. It's son. No, it's not. It's Daughter. Your, it's your actor carer. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not, I'm not asking them to act as me carer. They're not a carer because they're a professional actor. I'm not. I'm going to make sure they're registered with equity and everything. So they're fully defo. <laughs> they're under their own name. Like, But the character is going to be Barry Rowe, my are son. Are they looking after you medically? What? Are they, are they They're doing everything a son would do for his dying father. Put him in a home so he's all okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he's medically looked after. Do you know what my granddad... No, no, no. Do you know what my, my dad did for my granddad? What? He booked him a carer. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a motherfucker for you, isn't it? When you pay Barry Rowe a shitload, he's like, listen, dad, I'm dead busy. <laughs> but I've got this African lady who can help out. Your dad, Adam Roy, is doing very well, Barry. He's like, brilliant. Scene. <laughs> No, it's a 24 hour uh, party of people. <laughs> it's 24 hours, seven day a week, 365 days a year. Roll. Never off. No time off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have paid you, you know, £40 million this year. But you're not going anywhere, are you? Because my ass needs cleaning anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little bow on that. Let's hope your jizz works. Because that anywhere. seems complicated. <laughs> Uh, uh, right, Robert. Who's Robert? Anyway, Robert says, "Wag wag lids." Uh, is there anyone who could turn up at a tour date that would really mess you up? Like if Mo Salah was on the front row for Adam at his tour show, how do you think he would react? I just fist bump on me. Is there anyone who'd throw you off? Um, th- I don't know. Throw me off. I just. Someone so famous that it could it, it could stop me doing my thing. I don't think I'd be I'd be chuffed. I th- to be fair, actually, some of the really big American actors, 
that might throw me off if I was like, is that Brad Pitt? What are you doing at the Nottingham Glee? <laughs> like that might be but I would a just, little bit. That's literally how I'd deal with it though. Like if Mo Salah was on the front row, I'd walk on and be like, Fucking Mo Salah's here, what's going on? I'd just address it immediately. It wouldn't throw me off. Ryan Reynolds has watched you though. Yeah. Were you aware of that? No. No. Not until afterwards. But also, I knew that there'd be famous people at that gig. What was that? What gig was that? It was Dean Coughlin's gig at the Jack and you new material night at the Jack and <laughs> Yeah, Ryan Reynolds was there. Because Ryan Reynolds has bought Wrexham and on a Monday he's like, Brother we Jack. need to get in touch with Wrexham's um, PR team about Ryan Reynolds. Can you ask one of them to do that? Um, I'd like to send him on. And a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, it, would, it wouldn't throw me off. I'd just be like, I'll tell you what would put me off. Someone who I know was an escaped murderer. Right. Yeah. Who do you know that's an escaped murderer? There isn't any at the minute. Right. But if you find out about one, right, okay. Like it's, if Osama bin Laden was in the front row and you were like, fuck, I thought he was dead. Yeah, I wouldn't reference that because I'd be scared of like getting it wrong and misidentifying another <laughs> yeah, Asian man yeah, with a beard. You really want to be careful. Osama bin Laden could be sat on my front row with a t-shirt on saying, I am Osama bin Laden. What are you going to do about it? And I'd just be like, I oh, you mate, you're all right. And I'd just crack on. I wouldn't even, I would not even acknowledge it. I'd just be like, listen, I just want to let you know in the break, there is an Asian fellow in the front row who is doing a bit of shtick. Let's, uh, yeah, you don't want to get called out on that. <laughs> Don't you want to get to Kevin Hart level where you... Do you remember the Kevin Hart bit? The show where, like, LeBron's in and... Like that. How cool would that be in a few tours? Like an, an audience with Adam Rowe, like they used to do on no, ITV. Yeah, no. If they just come to your tour shows. If they're not... Like, an audience with is a bit gimpy, I think. Yeah. It's a bit gimpy, like... I don't know. Like the Adele one. But then the Adele... The Adele one was kind of cool, though, because... She's a cool person. She's so good. She and it's also that. singing, it's not comedy. Yeah. But the an audience with Billy Connolly is one of the best hours of stand-up I've well, ever seen. But that's 30 years ago, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there've, there's been a lot of shit an audience with. I'm talking about Kevin Crackers Hart. There. Kevin great. Hart. Kevin Hart. <laughs> Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was just doing his special filming, mm. and he was like, yeah, I'll just get LeBron in and... All of these stars. How cool would it be if you were filming your special down the line at the fucking Echo? You're like, yeah, there's Jordan Henderson, Andy Robertson, Sam, Trent Alexander. Sam. I don't think it's that far away from a possibility eventually. Leon Osman. Leon Osman. Ooh, that'd put me off. <laughs> would it? Would that be the one for you? If Leon Osman was in the crowd, I'd just have to get off. Why? His head's massive. <laughs> Couldn't see. No. <laughs> I think you know what would put me off? If anyone that we'd been, like, mental to was at the... Like, if Helen Mirren was there. Mother Teresa. Michael Bell. Oh, yeah, that would be a little bit off the point. Yes, I'm here for the comedy. Yeah. What would you do with Michael <laughs> Barrymore? It is. On a tour show. I'm a nightingale. He's my favourite comedian. Can't wait come to see his new hour in Charlie Little Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. I'd be like, is that Mother Teresa? Kevin Webster. I'd be Webster. like, Ishan, have you brought anyone with you? Or Barrymore on front row. Go Kevin Webster. On. If Kevin Webster was there, I'd get him to do the offstage announcements bring me on. <laughs> hey, listen up, everyone. It's hey! Adam Rowe. Hey, it feels like an old favourite just yeah. came Adam out. Adam Rowe. He does it all the time. He's going to do the same hour he's been doing every day <laughs> since February. Who's he doing it for? What? Who's he doing it for? What do you mean? Who's he doing it for? I'm doing, I'm doing for that, Jack. For the pain customers? <laughs> He's not doing it for that, Who's he not doing it for? Not doing it for that. Oh, he's forgetting the bit on purpose, the fucking rat. <coughs> I'm not doing it for stage time. I'm not doing it for fees. Doing it for money. Here's, <laughs> here's a question for you. So you're doing your tour show. Helen Mirren would put me off. So I've threatened to smash your flaps in. <laughs> threatened. Threatened. <laughs> hey. Helen. It's more than fucking words, girl. Um... If you were in a city that's got like a really famous comedian, so are you doing Glasgow? Yeah. Right. So if Kevin Bridges or Frankie Boyle mm. turned up, yeah. right, not just in the audience, but they're just backstage, you turn up and they're like, hey, Dan, just there have to <laughs> show my support and for they, you, buddy. And they, were, and they were doing their bad Billy Conley impression. <laughs> oh, hey. I'm a death. <laughs> Fucking Kevin Bridges would be like, hey, don't be a Jose Kodongo. He turned up and he was like, oh, Daniel. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. You're Scottish. Denny. No, try and do it properly. Denny Nettingale. Try and do it properly. Try and do Bridges properly. Italian. Go on. I'm Kevin Bridges. 
Okay. It's a pleasure to be here, Daniel. Have you just had dental work done, Kev? <laughs> Don't worry about the fucking teeth, baby. My name is Frankie fucking Boyle. <laughs> Boyle. 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 Shut up, shut up, Boyle. Uh, uh, Frankie Boyle. <laughs> Frankie Boyle. I got my game with Shut up, Boyle. I the people say. I do a joke about Jordans. Got Would you... Would you get them on to do a little set if they were up for it? So Frankie Boyle turns up at your show in Glasgow and he's like, just here to watch. Uh, I've been listening to the odd podcast when I've been driving. I think it's fucking great. And uh, it was always a funny stand up. Uh, but I'm just going to watch. <laughs> Speak to Ray Bradshaw and be like, mate, this is harsh, but I'm bumping you from my own tour support. No, but like Ray's still there. And, and then go get them on after Ray. Yeah, so Ray, you just go to Ray, Ray. You just go to like, let's say it's Frankie or Kevin Bridges. So you're like, um, do you want to do a set? And they're like, yeah, go on. This is 10. Would you go to right? You just do fifteen and just bring Kevin up. Yeah, you'd do it. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it would be pretty harsh if that night in Glasgow you were ten, fifteen minutes into the second half, which is your actual show, and you just uh, bring fucking Bridges back. <laughs> uh, okay, the, uh, he's been on stage, guys. I'm hoping you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, I would, of course. Yeah, I'd absolutely because do it. it's gonna be a fucking. Would you ask now. them, or would you wait for them to offer? No, I wouldn't ask them. No, I wouldn't. I would. I go, do you want to do 10? Yeah. I suppose. Do would you they wanna, offer? Do you want to do 10 is different than, can you please do 10? Yeah. Like, there's a way of that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do? No, I'd probably just let them have a night off. Because I think if I'd gone down to see my mate do a tour show. Yeah. I just probably just want to watch it. And I don't know. Maybe not. It's I'd just be like, you want to do this? No. Sounds. Can I say the person who would freak me out? Yeah. Is someone like a. A Chappelle or a Kitson or a... A, a top-level comma. Front row. Yeah. Front row. Because you can't do what I've just said and be like, oh, fucking Mo Salah. You can't go, oh, Dave Chappelle's here. If Mo Salah is sat at the front, I don't know why he's come to see me. He's like, yes, I, I love comedy. And although Adam is a very big Liverpool fan, I'm actually more of a Dan Nightingale man. There go I by the grace of God. His name was from Preston. So. Yeah, all right. My name's Mo Salah. <laughs> His name was from Preston. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh. big from the Egyptian quarter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just near Bamber Bridge. Shut the fuck up. It was Maury and Salah. Yeah. Maury. <laughs> Maury and Salah. Named after his name. Running for the bus. <laughs> Running for <laughs> the bus. <laughs> Maury. Maury. Running for the bus. Maury and Salah. Maury and Salah. <laughs> yeah, if, if Mo Salah wasn't laughing, I'd be like, I'm like, ah, it's just, it's a lost in translation. I'd be fine. I wouldn't bother. Just if, Helen, just every joke. if Helen Mirren was sat there and she wasn't laughing, I'd be like, it's because I've threatened to smash her flaps in. Why is she there though? But if Dave Chappelle was in the front row and he was just like, it, even just looking bored, if Tom Segura was in the front row looking bored, if Tim Dillon, if fucking Chrissy DiStefano. Oh, that would ruin my evening. I still think about it. It got mentioned last night. I was at a gig last night that wasn't great. Uh, I was there with Colin Havey. Colin Havey was a punter. Colin Havey runs <laughs> gigs around here. And he was like, I was whinging about the gig because there was a raffle in the break. Like, hey, we're just going <coughs> to stick a raffle on in the break. And then we're going to have an auction. And I was like, oh, it was such a good gig. I watched Matt Stellingworth, who's a decent comic, good comic. And he was having a fucking blinder. And I was sat there going, this is going to be great. 15 minute break and I'm going to be on at like half eight, quarter to nine, and I'm going to smash this. Just going to do a quick raffle. Fuck off. I always just say no, no. I'm like, no, raffle. you can do that after I've been on. It was fucking bedlam, the raffle, and it revved them all up. And then in uh, after the break, the compare was like, hey, shush, guys, guys, shush, shush, can you come? Hey, shush, 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 can you keep it down, please? Keep it down. Like, yeah, but you've done this. You've had a raffle. And, the a, raffle at the and end a of the fucking show? auction. You, you, uh, it's all very well shushing them, but you've revved them up. They're pissed I've, now. I've... I've had that oh. in the past few years when, I, when I've got to a gig and they go, oh, we're just going to do a raffle before you close. I go, no, 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 no. Do that after. Do it at the end of the show. It'll be better for literally everyone. It benefits no one and ruins my set for you to do it now. So do it at the end of the show. I just sat and there sometimes going, they're like, oh, right, okay. But they've never told me to shut the fuck up and it's getting done. Sometimes they're like, oh, right, okay. Well, we'll just do it your way. And I'm like, yeah, you fucking will. 
Yeah, this is a guy that should know better, though. That's what tricky one. I would have done that. If it was just a member of staff, I'd have been like, oh, this is how this is going to go. No, they just This is a well-respected 25-year veteran. Doesn't matter. Well, he, he's not well-respected, is he? Uh, he can't be because he's doing raffles before the headliner. So, fuck off. No. I was sat with Colin Bollocks. Haven. I was whinging. And he was like, it's so funny. I love watching you hate gigs. And he was like, do you remember the gig we did in uh, Nutsford? And uh, there was those two women... And I remember it fucking perfectly. And the reason I remember it, shit gig, badly organised, no one running it, two women at the front. To the point where I was like, are you all right? Can we get on with this show? Because you talking like that is really off-putting. And the one went, well, I think you have been extremely rude. Ne like a woman who, just posh, Cheshire posh, has never been told to shut the fuck up. Oh. And she was appalled at the prospect. And I'm looking around and the room's like, oh God, you were rude about it. And even the promoter was like, bit rude. You're like, this is a shit show. And the reason it pisses me off still to this day, because Mark from Mark and Lard, Mark Radcliffe was in the back. It was his local boozer. And he was sort of paying attention. I was like, when I was growing up, Chris Evans and Mark and Lard were my favourite radio on DJs. I fucking love them. And that's why I wanted, I wanted to be a radio DJ. And I did work experience in radio and Mark and Lard were my heroes. And I was at a shit gig having an argument with some posh twat from Cheshire. And at the back, Mark Radcliffe was sort of watching and just talking to his mate through my comedy. <sighs> when it's someone famous that you respect or like, not, not like he's a massive hero, to have them chat to their mates or be cunty or, God, imagine Tom Segura just sat there looking bored at you. Yeah. Oh, Horrible. It would, not only would it sort of, ruin my night, it would make it really hard to enjoy anything Tom Segura did from that point on. Yeah, yeah. Because you'd be did like, you oh yeah, them? what do you think of your mom's house? I think Tom Segura is a big fat moody twat. That's what I think. Yeah. So yeah, that's my answer. Right, so here's a question for you. Right, so your fucking raffle last night pissed me off. Go on, go on. It's so fucking annoyingly mm. shit and I don't, I don't care if the, I don't know who the promoter was, but whoever the promoter is in question, you're a fucking idiot and you need to stop doing that before your headline act. You're ruining your own gig and your headliner's gig. So just stop it. Um, here's a question for you. The other gig I did for you last month was great. No raffle. So, so um, you're at Hot Water. See you in 2022, Merry right? Christmas. You're at Hot Water. You're doing your tour show, right? Before the show, into the green room walks Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> that, yeah. Right? Cool. And he goes, listen, Dan, big fan. <laughs> um, in that voice. Looking forward to this and to book tickets. What? Uh, I'm a patron. So I got priority access. The Rock's a patron. Right? £10. Um, they've sat me on the front row, mate. But do us a favour. Don't talk to me. I'm really shy. <laughs> so just ignore me. Right? Please. Honestly. Yeah. Like, it, like it'll, it'll break my heart yeah. if you involve me in this show in any way, shape or form. Okay, I'll be really upset. And um, like me, me agent, you know, he'll ruin you, mate. Like he will yeah. ruin your career. Adam Rushton. Yeah. yeah. He will ruin your <laughs> career. If if you do anything, so you do not mention me. Oh, nice so, to get a, a request and then a threat. Yeah, uh, yeah. please don't. Nice please don't. I'm please very don't. low on confidence, don't, don't, and we will end you. Yeah, don't don't make me ruin your career. I don't want to do that. I like you. So then you walk on stage, a hot water in that two hundred seat room where they're all packed together, and on in the middle of the front row where everyone can see him is Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, sat next. <laughs> who's who's he next to? To Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter. But you're not allowed to talk to her either. Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. Wow. What would you do? Were they a Tinder date? What? How did oh. they get together? They just They've know been having an affair for years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That would be off-putting, wouldn't it? Dwayne The Rock Johnson. 87-year-old national treasure Maggie Smith getting smashed by The Rock. Dwayne The Rock Johnson actually played the Norwegian Ridgeback in Harry Potter. He was one of the dragons. And they started fucking on set. It's a, it's a well-known fact. <laughs> they started fucking on set. <laughs> He played a dragon. <laughs> CGI. Professor McGonagall. <laughs> he just used his body to get like the, the CGI like around. They just used his movements. Apparently it's very dragon like. It's some dragon experts looked into me. <laughs> but you know this. <laughs> Harry Potter fans are like, really? Didn't know that. No, on Pottermore, the Harry Potter website, it's, there's a big article about it. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. But he's been poor. <laughs> I feel Smith sorry. Ever Can I just it's a fair... <laughs> Can I just say I feel massively sorry for the poor con that's in the second row at Hot Water. With the rock in the front row, like just like yeah, Dad. That's Liam Neeson on the second row. <laughs> right, you can talk to him. Wow, but you can't see him. It's a really random evening with Dan Nightingale. But what would you do? Dwayne the Rock Johnson said he's enormous, and you're not allowed to reference it. Imagine if 
you referenced it and were like, I know you said, I, but I've got to point out that it's The Rock. And he was like, fuck this. No, no. He stood up and walked out. No, no, that's not what happens. He just bursts out crying. <laughs> he uncontrollably <laughs> sobbing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, he's, but it he, does. It clearly does matter to him. He, he reacts in the same. <laughs> it does matter. He reacts in the same way as like someone l- losing their mother, like at an unexpected age. <laughs> he's just like, not <laughs> like uncontrollable sobbing, <laughs> and he does not stop. Is that what you did when you lost your mother? I went silent. <laughs> I didn't process it. You didn't? We went for the bevies? And, uh, hey, hey, we've both lost our mums, and let me tell you, both of us went through the ah, la weeping yeah. widow stage, yeah. yeah. But he, uh, he, he just he, starts weeping uncontrollably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't he move? I go, oi, Dwayne, stop being a fucking fanny. <laughs> Maggie Smith's like comforting him, like, Yo, he told you, you are bang out of order, Dan. Shh. Maggie's going to fuck you good tonight. Shh. Hey, don't worry about it, The Rock. Shh. I'll get it dead hard. She calls him The Rock. Shh. <laughs> she calls him The Rock hard. Shh. I could transform into a pussy in Harry Potter. And I can't wait till oh. you transform into mine later. Right. Because she, cause she, she morphed into animals, didn't she? Shh. Clever. Come That's on, Dwayne. Come on. Shh. She will later. No, you crack on with your set. Go on, love. Shh. And You'll what, be all right. Don't worry about it. Sorry, I, I overreacted. Shh. Oh, God, Maggie Smith's quite Shh. diplomatic, isn't she? Uh, I'm going to say, Finn's just said, what's going on? <laughs> Maggie he... Smith is comforting Dwayne The Rock Johnson because uh, Dan upset him. Yeah, and Liam Neeson. Ah, hot water and, li- and Liam Neeson hasn't got a good view. <laughs> there you go. You I'm hoping it. to live stream the last night of the show, and part of me hopes that this happens. What would you do if The Rock said, don't talk to me, but then just kept like getting your attention? <laughs> Hey, and like, oh, I don't. Uh, under no circumstances will you talk to the rock, and then just in the is kept going bender, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like you do it. Ending the joke with like not does it not? Dwayne the Rock Johnson was that? Did you? Just call me <laughs> all right, all right. All right. That joke I, didn't honestly, Toby. all of it would be less annoying than that fucking raffle last night. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a story. Oh. Next question, question two. <laughs> 27 minutes. <laughs> question two. <sighs> right, okay. Wag wag lids. Been trying to get my life together and cut out all the shape from my diet, but I'm still a fat cunt. Uh, would you, So, would you rather only drink water for the rest of your life or only drink fizzy drinks for the rest of your life? Much love, Ross. What do you drink more of? Fizzy drinks. So, are you going fizzy drinks? But... There are times when water is absolutely essential. Yeah. yeah. Like if you're doing a half marathon, you can't have a cherry coke. Ah, <laughs> you'd be dead. I'm sick of doing half marathons <laughs> and having a, f- having a can of Tizer. Like, ah, as much as I love this slightly nostalgic beverage, just doesn't feel suitable at mile three. <laughs> when's, wa- when's water like the dentist? You know, you, when officially, you're, you're not really drinking it. Can you? Are you allowed to swim? Oh God, brushing your teeth. You absolutely need water for brushing your teeth. Unless you, need you water are. when you're brushing your teeth. What? What are you talking about? You gotta swill your mouth. Oh, yeah, I suppose some of it goes down. So what class is drinking it? You, you swill you... your mouth. What? Huh? But I use water to brush my teeth. You dry brushing? You... No, there's toothpaste, isn't there? Do you wet? Do you wet the toothbrush? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not biting. I do. You don't wet the toothbrush? No, it doesn't count with Finn because he's weird and Welsh and Turkish. <laughs> you wet the toothbrush? Yeah, of course you wet the toothbrush. What are you talking about? Do you She's just looking at me? Do you just take the toothbrush, put the toothpaste on, and then straighten the mouth? Yeah. And your mouth's dry. No water well, at all. The 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 scientists who make toothpaste have judged how much water needs to go in the formula. So there's already water in the toothpaste to make it a paste, isn't there? Uh, I know this is not true, but Finn's telling the truth. No. I know you use cold water because you've I told me. No, I don't. I used the cold water <laughs> at the, at at the end of the thing to rinse me toothbrush off so there's not like stale paste on it the next day, but that's it. Hey, you know what you're not meant to do is swill your mouth out after you've brushed it. 
You meant to use mouthwash before you brush your teeth. No, like, if you talk to a dentist, they don't even want you using mouthwash. Mouthwash you can't use for 30 minutes before or after you've brushed. My mate Bondy's a dentist and he fucking hates talking about uh, mouthwash. Uh, apparently dentists don't care if you wet the toothbrush as long as you're correctly brushing. Wow. Wow. Hmm. You're a dry brusher. No. Made the roller. I knew he wasn't. Um, he told me he wasn't. Finn. Finn's you're a, a fucking freak. weirdo. <laughs> dry brush. I mean, but it's no longer a surprise with Finn. Ever. No. Right. No wonder you're always tired and sad. What happens? When do you need <laughs> what hang on, hang on, genuinely, because if if you every meal is better if you've got like a diet coke or some sort of When you're giving someone an orange squash and you've got like dilated it like coke. <laughs> that sounds lovely to be honest. It doesn't. Orange coke. To be fair, lemonade's lovely with orange. Do you know if this would you rather existed, I'd be so much healthier because just need to stop drinking this aspartamine shite. Whatever it's called. I think we all have to pick waters just so we don't die because you would live a lot less. When I when I had COVID, all I could drink was water and I looked healthier because I wasn't drinking. <laughs> so funny. I wasn't drinking any drinks. I've got a pit. I took a selfie to be like, oh, I've got COVID. I was like, Laura, she was like, yeah, COVID really suits you. It's it's the age old thing, isn't it? Is it better to live a long, boring life or a short, exciting one? Because yeah, with water, you'll live a lot longer, but you'll be unhappy because you won't have any flavor in your life. Or you can drink Lucas Aid every day and die when you're forty. <laughs> yeah, and we know somebody does that. <sighs> so what's better, an eighty-year-old who's like, well, you know, I didn't do much with my life. I just ate vegetables and drank water and oh, stayed no, in the house. Yeah. And then you've got the fucking Lucas Aid crackhead who does nothing but fucking Lucas Aid extremist crack. sports. Oh, mate, the cocaine and pills I've taken in my relative youth. I'd rather go base twenty years on MDMA than stay in the house and look at broccoli. Right, that's the only two options you've got. Yeah, they're the two extremes. <laughs> but I, I've taken I've taken twenty years off my life. Like my my granddad is ninety six. Even with medical science on my side, I genuinely will be surprised if I hit eighty. You well done. Right, but you you but I'm, you've taken the the worst twenty years off your life. Eighty to a hundred. Who wants those years? <sighs> yeah, just shitting yourself and feeling bad about getting someone. To He's wipe doing it off. very well. <laughs> His eyelids, want. his eyelids are not working, but he is still alive. Yeah, I don't. I'm all right. It's just the worst part of your you life. You want someone to wipe your shit for you now? I don't really. All right. I've said it for fun. But if, like, we, but if we could put it on the job description. It is sad, isn't it? When you're just like, oh, I've done it again, Margaret. And she has to come over and it's like, oh, I don't mind. I don't, uh, I don't mind. Uh, uh. Why well, should be boxing? <laughs> 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 yeah, I agree. Right. <laughs> Let's call Lucas Aid and die young. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> One more. One more. One more. Two more. Got a quick would you rather. Don't know who this is from. Ben. Some con called Ben. Um, Hi, some con called Ben. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather never wank or have sex ever again or every time you finished? Have a small man jump out the cupboard, flick your knob and run away, singing Lord has gone in a thick Caribbean accent. Love the pub boys and can't wait to see old Broy bags on tour. What was March. that? Have a quick rummage in a cupboard. What? Right? No, <laughs> no, you've missed it. <laughs> Would you rather never have a wank again, or have sex, or yeah. sex again? Yeah. Or every time you finish, so every time you spunk, yeah. Um, every time you come out your jizz, uh, a small man jumps out of the oh. cupboard, <laughs> flicks your knob, and runs away singing "Lord has gone" in a thick Caribbean accent. That one. Lara's gun. Lara da bitch be gun, gun, gun. Lara da bitch be gun, 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 gun. Lara da bitch is gun. She's gun, gun, gun. Lara gun, gun, gun. Oh, she gun, gun, gun. I bet you know it's not John Apal. She left the man. She left the man. The Lara's gun. Take a take a Lara's gun. Lara's gun. Let's get. Should we do another remix? Lara's gun, the shana pala la Lara's gun. Yep. That might be better than the original. What we've just done there. Yeah, then your shit. She moved to my house. Is what was that making a Caribbean? No. Okay. So what, what would you rather? Chessington and stuff. Just to never to never jizz again. Mm. That doesn't sound good, does it? No. God have I, I, I'm taking fucking I'd take that anyway over normal sex. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> Where does he go? Where does he go, though? Just leaves. 
Just leaves. He runs away, singing Laura's Gone. I, I imagine he goes and hides somewhere else in your house. He's magical then. <laughs> Is he magical? Because I've got kids. I would imagine he has to be magical, otherwise, what an existence this is. <laughs> no, I mean, is he magical? And he, because basically, every time I jizz, if there was a small Caribbean man running around my house, <laughs> uh, is he CRB checked? Because he doesn't sound it. He <laughs> doesn't sound it's like, like he's passed his CRB check. I like a, a flicking balls after the jizz. I miss the wet patch, and that's the biz. Alara's gone. I love it, gone. She's gone, gone, gone. gone, gone. gone. I love it, love it, love it, gone, gone, gone. 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 I love it, love it, love it. She left her man. Love is gone. Hey, you've just come, but let me tell you, love is gone. Attack, attack, attack. <sighs> yeah, I go celibate. celibate. <laughs> I go celibate. I chug somewhere with no cupboards. <laughs> then he comes to the wall. No, like no, 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 no. He's like Father Christmas. This guy. I love sex in a car. He's like Father Christmas. You're like, oh, where? Well, well, Santa, we live in a flat. Santa's magical, and the uh, where it would have been a fireplace opens up, and that's how Santa. You know, I remember it's having the an same. argument. If you have no cupboards, he comes out of like from under the bed, like a laragan flick laragan. I dead? remember having an argument with my dad when I was a kid about Santa and the chimney. When he was like, yeah, Father Christmas comes down the chimney, and I've always, since I was very, very young, had any problem with authority that I can't understand. So I told you about like when I used to work in bars, people like do that and I'd be like, no, it makes no sense. So I'm not doing it unless you explain it to me. Like I've been like that since I was a child. Since I was a child. Right? Yeah. So my dad would be like, Father Christmas come down the chimney. And I must have been four or five and I was like, but there's no way a grown man, never mind a big fat one that I've seen on the Coca-Cola, I'd could fit down that. And he was like, well, it's magical. And I was like, well, why, was it, why wouldn't he just like magic himself into the room? Why, why is the chimney needed at all? He's like, well, it's a, it, he needs a space. And I remember going, why doesn't he just come through the letterbox? And I could just see me dad, like in me, head. now I've got the memory and he's just getting angry and angry. He's like, it, it's the chimney, all right? Well, he comes down the fucking twatting chimney and that's the story, bed. <laughs> I wouldn't let him in my house. I told you, haven't I? He wasn't allowed in my house. Father Christmas. He had to go outside. It's because you were sick of finding men in the house bumming your ma, weren't you? I was just like, mum. Oh, God. <laughs> I saw the little moment he goes He's like, I don't want to do this. I want to do Laura. No, I was like, there's not a random man coming in my house. And she, I went, what happened? She went, well, when you're asleep, he comes in. I was like, well, that's not happened. She went, what do you mean? I was like, well, when I'm a kid, there isn't a fella in the house. Just running around for own things and that. And little did you know. So I went. Five days a week, it was already happening. She went, well, you're not getting presents then? I was like, well, I am. So she built a Wendy house in the garden and he visited that instead. So he is not coming to my house when I'm a kid. End of. Wow. You were, Screwed on, mate. Yeah. A little bit of the magic of Christmas is gone. I don't fucking know him and I'm not vouching for him. <laughs> Lock the fucking doors, mum. Don't need presents. You know, I don't need getting touched by some random cunt from the North Pole. It is weird that we tell kids, ignore strangers, don't talk to them. You know, if you ever see a strange man run away, call the police, whatever you need to do. But then once a year, a man that none of us have ever met... He just magics in. himself into the house. Don't take stuff from strangers. <laughs> a stranger comes into your house, <laughs> using magic, and leaves loads of free stuff and chocolate and sweets for you. Yeah, yeah. You okay with that? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Yeah. My uh, last year, building up to Christmas, my uh, sister had to tone down the Santa's always watching thing because my niece nearly had a fucking panic attack because she was like, "This all-powerful cunty <laughs> bastard is watching me." They put up security um, things, you know, sensors, just for security. And my, my sister was like, see them? They're Santa cams. So whatever you're doing, he's watching. You better be good. She was like, ah, ah, I can't fucking do anything, man. <laughs> so I had to like, oh, they're just for security, tone it down. Because she was getting too hyped up and scared of Santa. Because parents lean on it too much as a behavioural sort of tool. Well, listen, what you do now, you can do the, the fake phone call. You put the name in. And it goes, oh, hello, Dan, I've heard you've been bad. It's like a mobile call, so then that, that's the way you're doing it. Right. I think there is a line, isn't there? That, that dad that wrapped fake presents and has a little log burner, he was like, oh, little tip that. to the parents. I put it on my Instagram. Little tip to the parents. You want to keep them in line before Christmas. Wrap a few empty boxes, make them look like presents. And when they piss you off, open the fire up. <laughs> in one goes one of the presents, close it up. Do that again, you'll lose the fucking lot of them. <laughs> That's a fucking psycho. See, Love it. This is why a cage year round just helps. Helps at all. 
Kids love threats. Yep. Love. Not engaging? No. I, I've, I've hit my cage banter limit. I'm like, I've, get one. I want to see one. Can we get one? Yeah. Put well, Finn in it every time he fucks a <laughs> subtitle on. <laughs> He'd never be out of it. <laughs> He'd be like, this is like my eighth birthday. Oh, I'm like, not another story. <laughs> we were at a kennel. I thought we were going to adopt a puppy. But everyone left me there for two weeks. <laughs> Finn, goes, Finn, actually, you know, that you know what that did happen. <laughs> genuinely, as I looked at it, I was like, please don't actually have happened. <laughs> You've never been put in a cage, have you? No, not in a cage. People are into it for sex, aren't they? Like pretending to be like an animal or put in a cage and like, you know. I get it though. Oh, you get it? <laughs> yeah. Like a shark cage. Right. No, like a kennel, like a dog cage, a little bowl in <sighs> there. You want to be in there being a naughty little doggy. I don't want it, but I, I understand why people do. That's a new layer to the, every time I mention my kids, you mention in cages. <laughs> Interesting. No, I just, they're not related at all in my head. Laura. Go, go on. I just mean like a man being like, especially a woman actually, because obviously there's a lot of sexism in the world and bitch is a very loaded term because it, it is a, a derogatory term for a woman, but it's also a female dog. I'm being called a bitch all the time. If that goes into your head and makes you want to get in a kennel and pretend to be a naughty little bitch, who am I to say if that's wrong? <laughs> who are you to say that? Shout out to our feminist listeners. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy yeah. the rest no, of the year. I'm, I'm saying like, it, you know, like certain words get reclaimed. If there's any feminists out there who are like, you know, I've been called a bitch for years, so I'm going to start acting like one. Shit on the carpet. It's <laughs> on the couch. Where's me toy? You hell of a boyfriend you've got to be to that point. Yeah. The l- mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know, man. I mean, I, I get that you're into kinks. Sometimes I, when you're horny, like I, in the heat of the horniness, when people like, do this, or, like I could see that you do weird stuff, but you've got to buy a cage. You've got to, in the cold light of day, go to pets at home. Be like, this isn't even. This is on Tuesday. We're doing this on Friday night. <laughs> That's when I can't get the le- that level of weirdness. Like, I'm I'm into pretending to be a dog and and going in a cage. Like, yeah, but you fucking who got the like newspaper to put on the the bottom of the? I don't know. The, the planning okay. makes it cringy so, to me. Here's my question: What kink? What level of what's the highest kink you'd put up with? So let's say, for argument's sake, Laura has left. She's gone. She's gone. Right. She has moved. She just listened to the last 15 minutes. And She's went, moved ah, next nah. door because it's easier for childcare. Yeah. But it's just not working anymore. You so I've got, still got the house. You've got the house. She's next door. Oh, um, this sounds great. This is great. It's great. What's happened is just over a period of years, you've realised that neither of you are happy anymore and it's got really sad. <laughs> but you don't want to... <laughs> These are easier when they're ridiculous. <laughs> you just realise that you're friends, but maybe not lovers. <laughs> Adam, quicken this up. <laughs> you should realise that it's easier for the children if she's close by. Yeah. So she's next. This ne- sounds really quite fucking reasonable. <laughs> so you should have decided. Have a word, 2032. <laughs> Adam was right. <laughs> Fair play. So she's moved next door. Um, you still share a bank account, but things are just separate. Hell no. And like, you know, it, it's just how it is. And you start seeing a new girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You start seeing a new girl. What's this for? For Dan. Thanks for doing it so no one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> hit the bell, Marion. <laughs> you actually hit the noisiest thing on the table. Um, And, you know, she's been coming around a couple of times. You've had missionary sex. You've done a little bit of doggy style, oh, not Mr. doggy Dan. kennel. Mr. Dan, Mr. No, Dan. no, no, no. No, she's a scouser. Lad. She's your age. What? Yeah. Dirty she's waters. 43. Wow. Right? It's been two years. Uh, it's been a bit years. Yeah. She's 43. What's she called? Cheryl. No. Sharon. Oh, I'm not banging a Sharon. Alicia. <gasps> oh, Alicia. So I'll be Alicia. With an E. Right. Yeah. Alicia. At the end. Alicia. <laughs> Alessi. Alessi. She's called Alessi. Yeah. Alessi uh, Gola, uh, her name is. <laughs> and I'd like to feel her. <laughs> That was good, though. Sorry. Her name's Alicia. Elise. 
Alicia. Alicia. Right? She's so, Scouse. Yeah. So I'm Alicia. All right. Oh, you're a... I, I'm Alicia. I'm me. You're you. All right. Right? So you've got to bear in mind as well that your ex-wife lives next door. Just keep it down. With the kids. Right. Right? I'm Inclu- soundproofing that wall. <laughs> right, go on. Including Philippa. She's next door. As well. Let's not get into it. Patreon.com slash Hathaway Pod. The context on that. I love Street you, Wars. Um, Hi, babe. Where are we? Your house. This is so complicated. I forgot where I am. <laughs> your My house. house. Your Alicia. Fourth date. We, oh, I've sucked you off. Oh, right. When first date? First date. We. I. I just put my cards on the table. Mate, she's a forty-three-year-old scouse woman. She's yeah. sucking dick when she wants, first. and that's in an empowering way. First. Sisters, yeah. playing cards on, your on the side. first date. What? You playing cards on the first date? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> first date. We're in Wagamama's, and I was like, "Look, <laughs> give me the toilet roll." Fuck <laughs> off. First date. We're in Wagamama's, right? Because. Uh, I've got a simple taste in two of you. So she's like, look, cards on the table. Too. I've been single for a couple of years now and I, I'm not I'm not here to play games. We're not going to know whether we're going to work long term unless I suck you off today. So I'll suck you off. You can fuck my pussy from the front and from the back <laughs> and we'll take things from there. Is that okay? Yeah. Can I get the bill? <laughs> can I get the bill, please? Yeah. Alicia's ready. Are we at Cheshire Rose? <laughs> yeah. Right, cool. I'm going to yeah. drive her back round. No, we get a cab back because we've had a couple of drinks. That's why I'm loose. <laughs> when Adam commits to these role plays, he goes so far. Who's paying? We go in Dutch. <laughs> You're gonna fuck my pussy from both ends. You're paying. Alicia's paid it because she's actually got an ex-husband who was a billionaire. Yeah. Oh, nice. well. Let's not get too convoluted. She got a taste card. Go. <laughs> so, I've got it, babe. I've already paid it. Don't worry. She sounds great. Yeah. Forty-three-year-old nice. divorcee who's willing to move to Sorgul Cheshire, from and she's had a billionaire payout. So that's four dates in. You've, you've had a couple of dates. Everyone's ended with a nosh, a front pussy back, a back pussy back. No arsehole yet, though. A back pussy back? <laughs> a, Everyone a back knows. pussy smash. From, uh, smashing the pussy from the back. Have you ever had sex with a woman, Adam? <laughs> with a fucking fist in the pum pum? Fuck. You know. Like them women. Talk, they Like girls talk about it. A fuck pum pum pussy fucking back. So she, Yeah, all right, we're having sex. We're, we're going back to have sex. She's like, Look. We've had pretty standard sex, me and Alicia. <laughs> Quietly, because Laura's next door fuming about the divorce. Never mind. Yeah. Go. So she's like, look, right, babe, here's the thing. I'm ready to get serious with this, but my sexual needs and fantasies have never been fulfilled by men before. <laughs> look me in the eye. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't so see Alicia. I can't. <laughs> I, I can't honestly commit to this relationship mm. unless I know you're into what I'm into. Okay. So look, I'm not saying every time. We have sex. I need this. But like once a month, I think Carl's getting me a wig. I think that's funny. <laughs> no, I'm not putting that on. Is it a wig? Go on. I've, at least she's got me. So look, not every time we have sex. I don't need it every time. But just like once a month, maybe. It's very distracting with Carl rearranging the back of the room. Just rummaging. Carl, sit down. You're doing me head in. <laughs> just sit down. Just sit sh- down. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Carl. <laughs> so look, I don't need this every time, but just once a month, just so I've got the memory of it. I want you to piss on me in the bath. Oh yeah, that's quite vanilla. Oh, I done you. Oh, oh. So you, you'll piss on me in the bath. I just need to lay in the bath like I'm having a bath, but an empty bath. I'll be naked. My fanny will be out and everything. And I just need to get your cock out and wee all over me. Is that okay? I mean. It's n- I'm going to do loads for me, but if it, it you know. Yeah. yeah and then yeah, biannually, yeah. I need you to shit on me as well. Right. Uh, twice a year or every two years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> From before. Right. Twice a year. Twice a year. Yeah. On my birthday and on Easter Sunday. <laughs> Easter Sunday. Are we going away this weekend? No, we're fucking not. <laughs> Spa weekend with a wet room. And occasionally, like maybe like once a year or whatever, I like to I like to be a wolf. <laughs> so I'm gonna stay in the garden overnight. Right. <laughs> and I want you to come out saying, Where's the fox ruining my crops? <laughs> and I'm gonna howl. I'm gonna go, Woo What am I wearing? You're just wearing your undies. And, oh, your, right. and your sliders. Undies and sliders. And then... And I'm a farmer with undies and sliders. 
<laughs> who's ruining my crops as he walks out in his fucking Alessi sliders? I want you to come out with a torch, and then as the torch meets my eyes and they reflect the light back at you, I'm going to stop still. And at that point, I want you to come over and fuck me in the garden. See, so essentially what's happened here, you've and as flowered you're it up, fuck, Alicia, but as basically... As you're fucking me, I'm going to howl the entire time. Right. Arr- Right. In the pussy. Wearing <laughs> wearing a tail. Wearing a full wolf's outfit or no. no. So it's basically me just banging some loud woman in my sliders in my own garden. Yeah. And Laura's next door with the kids. <laughs> just once a year though. We we'll only do it when, when we know Laura's away. Right, good. So Laura's whenever, gone. Whenever Laura's, Laura's gone. gone. Woo when it, and we, it's a full moon, Dan. We, get we, your sliders. We'll pay for Laura to go on an you annual fucking will. on an annual trip, right, to the Lake District with her with her Amelia family and the children. Great. And then I'm getting wolf fucked in the garden. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I, I feel like you flowered it up. Basically, I'm just doing your doggy in the garden. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. I don't want to poo he on anyone finished. really. I he don't poo in on someone. How does that even? Also, with me, it's not like, listen, see you up there in half an hour. It happens when it happens. Like, there's some times when I'm like, I have oh, to yeah, run babe, through the house like, babe, no. babe, it's go time, it's go time. Oh, yeah, babe, I'll never warn you when it's wolf time. You'll just hear me howling. Right. In the garden. You'll just be like, I don't know, doing the decorating or emptying Alicia, the it'd be a bit tragic if I think, fucking hell, there's just some stray dog in the garden <laughs> and leave you out there all night. Is this in winter? What? Is this in winter? It's now it's in the height of summer. That's when the Lake uh, District is at its best. I, I don't want them to have a bad <laughs> holiday. Tell, tell you what, Alicia, you're spot on there. You've gone for detail there, hon. You're right. Who wants a winter holiday in the Lake District? You're and right. then once every decade. Oh, on, my God. Oh. Every 10. Yeah. Is this the fourth date you're talking about once every decade? You better be good at this sex. But Yeah, but you told me you love me on yeah. date one. I know. I do get carried away. And I said it back on the third date. I know. And now every year. And I'd already big, heard this voice. On a on. big birdie. So, like... Like on on my next like big birthday, you know, like you go fifty third, twenty one. <laughs> yeah, um, so <sorry>, just <laughs> on me on me fiftieth birthday. Yeah, I want you to hire eleven little people to chant, Alicia is the best, as we're having wolf sex in the garden. Right. Yeah. Is that okay? Eleven. Yeah. The first. But team. I want them to be chained up like they're in prison in the thirties. A chain gang. A chain gang. Yeah. You want a chain gang of little people while you're getting wolf fucked in my garden? <laughs> yeah. That's never been said, that. That's no, never no. been said, that. Do you know what we've just decided, Alicia? We're going to have to pay for the other neighbours to go away again. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be Laura on one side. Lynn and Dean are going to a minimum Lake District on the other side. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. Do I... Can they be booked by an agency? Because I don't want to have to pay them cash after I've wolf fucked you. And on top of that... <laughs> Can you sign the invoice, lads? I, I like occasionally having a Catherine wheel hanging out my arsehole <laughs> while you fuck me in the mouth. Bobby night? No. Bobby yeah. night? <laughs> On Thanksgiving. Catherine wheel. Thanksgiving. A lit Catherine wheel. Yeah, going, woo! All right, I'll bring my goggles. I'm in. Cool. Yeah, good to know. Let's get the starters. I feel quite liberal. You do. Is there anything you'd say no to? Is there anything happening to me? You see... You see, the, the the thing that made all of that easy was I was doing the wee and I was doing the poo and basically I'm just having sex with some mentally insane woman. Yeah. It's still sex though, isn't it? Yeah. If she's fit and she's banging, it's fine. Cool. It's the the stuff when it's the other way around. So would she right. be allowed to poo on you? I'm a farmer in my Alessi sliders <laughs> in my underpants and I come out and you're a wolf. <laughs> and I get a strap on and go, you naughty little wolf, you stay away from my crops. And I'm like, oh, wolves don't eat crops. Whoa. <laughs> you fucking little vegan wolf. No. Naughty little vegan wolf. Then I'd be like, maybe not. Maybe You've I'm You've right. misunderstood the role play from before. It doesn't matter. No, it, it does. It, it does. It doesn't. No, what's happened is you thought a fox was eating your crops. But what's actually happened is there's a wolf out there. Right. <laughs> eating your crops. Great <laughs> cool. No, the crops are fine. Fucking foxes eating crops is a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> Shout out anyone who lives in the countryside who's like... Oh my God. What would you do if, a, if, if your dream woman said once a month she gets to come to a gig and undermine you on stage? And you can't, like, win? Uh, what does she do? Start a raffle. Um, <laughs> I'd, 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 she, she'd not last more than one undermine. 
I'd be like, if you ever do that again. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. That's your deal then, with her. Then no. No? No. Listen, you can, I'd rather get fucked like a wolf. <laughs> yeah. You naughty That's little it. fox. Stop eating all the crops. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Wolf's fucking foxes. Oh, my God. Ian and Linda back. <laughs> oh! <laughs> There's your oh. teaser. No, I've got the teaser, don't you worry. I think this, the first nine minutes is probably <laughs> teasable. <laughs> Thank God we didn't have a guest. <laughs> Can we have a break? Because there isn't another question that is like, wait, wh- where does it come from in your mind? What do you mean? I don't, I, I don't know if I respect the ability to ad lib or if it makes me worry about your sanity. <laughs> <laughs> ah, by the way, for everyone who's like, where was the bullshit bell? Let's have a break. Ladies and gentlemen, hell has frozen over. We've finally been fucking nominated for a fucking award. We've been nominated by the legends over at podbiblemag.com in the comedy section of this year's awards on their website. We're very excited. We want to win this one. It's a public vote. Go to podbiblemag.com right now and vote for us. Fuck everyone else. We're the best. And if you follow us on socials, if you don't follow us on socials, at Have A Word Pod, and then retweet, share things. If you see it, give it a like. Give this video a like. Subscribe. Do everything. Rub your tits on our podcast. <laughs> That's staying in. Yeah, no. No, no, I'll do. Yeah, ring the uh, bell as well. Rub your tits on our podcast. Thank you. Get on me. <laughs> I haven't had sex for a few days, and I am ready to come. Steve? <laughs> hey? You ever feel like that though? Last in. First, you ever feel like first that? Out. Like I don't. I, I'm not erect at the minute, but like I could get erect, come wipe it up, He's and not. be ready to go again in four minutes. I'm. <laughs> I need more time. You know, have you ever seen the uh, like films of old car engines being started? That's <laughs> what it's like. Get, yeah. <laughs> like that's what happens with my dick. I have to do like a little airman to get the propeller going. Is that in your 30s? Oh, in the 1930s, yeah. I had a little air. Uh, the Hindenburg. I had a, my dick. <laughs> I had a little pull of the pud last night. And genuinely, this is how tired I was. I couldn't be asked to use my imagination. Like I was going to not watch porn. I've been trying to watch less porn just for the sake of it. To, to watch less. Yeah. Right. Um, and I was like, right, so I'll have a little imagination wank. And then I sat down and went, oh, so I just got a little bit of porn. I've got myself going and then went into imagination. Hybrid. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. Got hybrid cock. No, I got one or the other. I've never had oh, an imagination Oh, I stay in, in that, like, what? I've never had an imagination wank. In oh, what mate, I did was I watched a bit phenomenal. of porn. I'm one of the best directors of my imagination <laughs> wanks. Going, I'm like the Wes Anderson of my wanks. Well, what I did, I watched a bit of porn and then I put those tits on someone else's body in my head. And I was like, go ahead. Whose body? A mix and match. Yeah. Wow. Well, like when you're creating a sim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whose tits were they? Ah. Whose tits were they? I don't know. Some random poor porn, woman. Random porn star. <laughs> you're going to say some bitch. But once, <laughs> once I start off on the porn, that's we've got to stay in there. You can't break up and be like, you know what? Excellent scene, lovely cinematography, but actually, Helen Mirren, as a mechanic. Yeah. Do you watch porn where the women are the mechanics? No, that's my imagination, wank. <laughs> I changed, like, you can do whatever you want. You can, Helen so. Mirren can be a deep sea diver, you can. and she could be a scouse deep sea diver, and she could come up from the Mersey and go, Dan, I've got loads of big tuna. Fuck my vag. And I'm like, <laughs> that's my imagination. Well, just like Wes Anderson. And Bill that, Murray's in the back going, hmm, with a pipe. Is your imagination uh, material dirtier or more uh, vanilla compared to the stuff you watch? Because uh, in my imagination, it tends to be women I know, and then I have to be nicer to them than the ones in porn. Uh, in because <laughs> 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 I might see them again, do you know what I mean? And I can't like look them in the eye if I've called them a fucking cum <laughs> In my mind, <laughs> in your imagination, you're like piff puff puff, gone. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, in your imagination, they can do anything. You can just yeah. I look like Chris Hemsworth in my imagination wanks. Oh, I look exactly the same. No, I don't. No. I look exactly. When the I watch same. porn, I am a fat forty year old bald man in Cheshire pulling my pud. 
when I'm in my imagination, I am Lancashire Chris Hemsworth the on- smashing the pee. The only difference in my imagination, Wangs, is that my dick is a little bit smaller, so the women are less scared of it. Yeah. Yeah. You wank like a psycho. It's good to know. Good to know. Helen Mirren. What? I got some big tuna. Mersey tuna. Get your knob out. I played the fucking queen. Did she? What you played the queen in? What? Chess. The queen's gamble. Have you played the chess game? What she played the queen in? The, the queen. A film called The Queen. <laughs> I've yeah. seen it. Uh, you could miss that one, couldn't you? Because <laughs> it was subtle. I haven't seen it. It's about the queen. Who the fuck is this guy? She's in The Devil's Wears Prada as well, isn't she? Yeah. So she played the queen and the devil. What a versatile woman. She's not in The Devil's Wear Pra Devil Wears Prada. She is. She's the devil in it. No, she's not. I know oh, that's not. That's um, uh, Mel Mel Streep. Genuinely, for all these years, thought they were the same woman. Good wank, though. Yeah. Meryl Streep. Fucking hell, lad. <laughs> Even I've got tuna. Me and Ellen. Tuna three-way. Mm. Not a sandwich. That'd be horrible. Who's Sophie's choice? <laughs> You'd have to ask her. <laughs> I don't is that know. Meryl Streep? I've never seen Sophie's choice. But Do you know what Sophie's choice is about? No. Do you actually not know what it's about? No, enlighten it's me. It's harrowing, you know. Okay. She has to give one of her kids up to be made. She has to pick which one. Is that true? What? Is that true? I've I don't I've never watched Sophie's Choice. She's Sophie. I've heard it's her choice. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Catch Twenty Two. Yeah. It's not ideal for anyone. Helen Mirren was in that as well, wasn't she? Catch Twenty Two. Yeah. She, she was in Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. She play she was played by Tom Hanks. No. Leonardo DiCaprio. I've had a wank over him. That boy catches big tuna. This is fucking ridiculous. We need guests in, otherwise it goes weird. <laughs> This is weirder than any Patreon exclusive. I've no, it's today. not. I've, I've today. loved it today. Yep. It's amazing. And we got Domino's delivered. And oh. for some reason, I picked up Mr. Pick, Mr. Kipling's French Fancies. Nana pudding. What did you call it before? Fondant Fancies. Yeah, I don't like that. I can't be the only one who went to Granny Fanny when you said Nana pudding. You, you could be, though, couldn't you? you're the only one, yeah. <laughs> Although I've just been talking about Helen Mirra's Big Tuna. Got some other words. <laughs> some other words. Look, Look at the confessions. No, we don't do confessions. We do confessions on the Patreon exclusive. Patreon.com slash have a word pod is where you can see them. Oh. Should, should we do a Patreon exclusive? Should we do a confession at the live show? We should, don't we? Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited do about that the live show. About the, the, the badges and the geese. <coughs> I will. Do that one. We've been in the studio too long, guys. <laughs> this one's been a weird way. Are you doing a Mike Tyson? Doing I don't know. I'm, just going to read, I'm going to read his Mike Tyson. Do Michael Jackson doing Mike Tyson? Yeah. How Michael Jackson doing Mike Tyson? That's not what he'd say, is it? Shamba. No, I'm doing Mike Tyson. I love doing Mike Tyson. It's not a bad impression. I remember two years ago, you said it was a bad impression. It's not a bad impression. No, it's quite good, actually. It's got better. Yeah, people, it's got better. people get my pigeons and they break their heads off and I became heavyweight champion of the world. Cool. That wasn't... I think it was good, right. yeah. It's all right. Why didn't you do the rest of the episode like that? Who dropped me to me? Costa Marto. Who? There's a trainer who died. Oh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I'll be Rocky Balboa. They've both got weird mouths. Go. Cut me, Mick. <laughs> 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 Again? What did you even say? I said, oh, it sounded like he was caught me, Mick. Uh, caught oh. me, Mick. Caught me, me, Mick. <laughs> Hiya, I'm Rocky Balboa. I'm from fucking Rochdale. <laughs> da 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 da. I'm I not didn't name no bell. <laughs> Hell of a chin. I don't need no bell. Spit all over That's Shane chin. Gillis bit. That's Shane Gillis bit about <laughs> sister. his sister beating heroin, COVID, and cancer. Phenomenal. Oh, oh. then the Nobel. Adrian! Ooh, you clunk. went full R there, though, didn't you? He'd been it really hard. Oh, <laughs> that one. Been, been it really hard Hang by on, a you car. Want me, you want me to be Tyson? <laughs> you be Sorry, Tyson. I'm my Tyson. Yeah. My Tyson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You think if we fall in real life, I'd fucking beat you? 
Rocky. In life, it ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning's done. Oh, my God. It's really scary. And yeah, I might dive in. But I'm, <laughs> I'm worried about your mental health. I tell you what I can do. You sound like a retired working on it. old lineman. Alfie Solomons. Tom oh, Hardy as Alfie sake. Solomons in Peaky Blinders. Can you drop your like, metal this is into your face, Adam? What? No. I want to see the face Oh, fucking Adam. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little. Uh, the thing is that we've got to do the rest of the fucking episode. So I am. Is he, you, you fucking idiot. Yeah. It's a bit crazy. I came to do that. You really do. You. You've got I came here for a fucking shootout. Yes. Like a western. Yes. That crazy scene is amazing. Uh, <laughs> you think the last section is her ally? My I was born in the last I've section. Got to do section three. There's no fucking guest to that, Tommy. So it's me and you. Get it done now. Get it done. You fucking cunt. Yeah, it's good. It is good. Pretty good. You keep getting worried that I'm going to say an Italian slayer, don't you? What, what, is, what do I think? Wop. I don't think we got a lot of American Italian listeners that are going to be popular. Why? Why is that a, a slayer? What's it mean? Wop. Uh, we're going to go. What's Guinea? It's money, innit? You Guinea fuck. Yeah, they're both Italian slayers. Um, Wop <laughs> is. Why is it awful? Go. Is it white of persecution without papers? Oh. So like an immigrant. Fucking what? Without papers. Right. And why do they call them guinea? Guinea pigs. You also say that's a people you who chew guinea? tobacco. Because the old the old race guinea pigs. You fucking guinea pig racing mama colotes. Oh! Right here. Get yours, buddy. Right here. You want to watch your fucking mouth, you fucking silly I came fucking here for cunt. a fucking shootout. <laughs> oh, okay. With so my big nipples. I'm going to read this one. This is the most vile racial slur that can be used against an Italian-American. It refers to Guinea on the coast of Africa. Using the slur is a very offensive way of implying Italian-Americans are not white. Apologies. To all our Italian-American listeners. Oh! <laughs> you fucks. Yeah. What's that Maniscolo guy called? Sebastian. Sebastian. I don't, I've, I've... <laughs> that is a hard watch. What? Have you watched his stand-up? Yeah, I like it. Fuck me, it's a hard watch. I mean, it, remind, as well, live. It, it reminds me of Dane Cook. You know, with a Dane Cook, and he's like, I'm doing a bit. And then I'm like, it moves around. And he's like, oh, and then I thought that. Fucking Sebastian Maniscolo. Like, I'm like, this is it's too- very Italian, yeah. No, it's a whole load of extra yeah, on yeah. top. Yeah, I know. But very stylized. It's performative, isn't it? Yeah, I like performative, but that's a bit much. I like it. We can have another break. I stopped in, uh, in, uh, enjoying doing the Italian American one. I prefer me uh, the one I did with John Eastings, the New York um, Jewish lady. Yeah. I'm here and I'm going to do a conversation. That's more enjoyable for me to do that one now. It's not enjoyable for the audio <laughs> listeners, though. What do you mean? They don't like it? <sighs> can we sell what people? Oh, these new headphones. <laughs> Fucking guinea red. Dan, can we add another line to honky pop? Honky pop? Whoppy pop. Whoppy <laughs> Honky wop. Fatty wop. <laughs> that is, that is so offensive. If you're half Caucasian and half Italian American, to be called a honky wop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, double racism. Mmm. Mmm. Mine's honky wop. What's yours? I don't have one. I don't want to have one up here. It's so, it's so contentious. I don't, I want to get in trouble. I recently oh. was on a television and I'd like to do it again. Oh, God. You are worried about your TV appearances. <laughs> Good job you don't ever have to perform as Ed Sheeran for eight minutes. Ed Sheeran is a fucking prick. And honestly, any place, any time. A people's know? elbow and right in the fucking cunt. Do you know the sad thing is, he really likes and respects you. Does he? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, well, he, he should like and respect me. I'm a likeable and respectable man. From before. And he is, like... From before. Can we I heard a rumour a while back that Ed Sheeran's involved in the sex slave trade. <laughs> Gee, I don't even... Honestly... So, if that turns out to no, be no, true... No, 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 no. Adam, I think we should raise ourselves above that. I'm not saying he is. No, because I don't think we should even talk about that. I heard it. 
Yeah. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying I heard it, which is a fact. From him. That's a verifiable fact. That you heard it? I heard it. Yeah, Someone yeah, yeah, told yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fact. Yeah. So I haven't said anything libelous because I did hear it. Yeah. That's Can you how, make that's chewing gum? Look. Carl, sometimes the fun we're having here is taken too far. What's wrong with chewing gum? Didn't like it. Awful. Peppermint chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> you made it funny again. <laughs> you peppermint chewing gum. Dewey, you should call him. Uh, Mike is a Dewey there. <laughs> I'm having great fun over there. I bet the Apollo was good though, wasn't it? Mm. When you did that once. That once. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> should I do a have a word? Because this has been epic. We've maybe made some new fans and lost a couple. Oh my God. Oh Show God. The shoes. One, two, or three. Was that a new name for them? Oh, shoot. Um, <laughs> one, two, or three. Oh, here we go. We'll go one. What's happening, Lids? I'm closing this off now because I've laughed so much. My fat is hurting under my rib cage. That's how today's gone. What's happening, Lids? Owen here from Dundee. Big fan of the pod, and although I'm not a patron, I will soon get it sorted. Owen, come on. I'd like you to have a word with myself as I just can't get my hole. I've had sex quite a lot of times, especially... With my ex, however, after our breakup three years ago, I last shagged her the night Liverpool won the Champions League. 2005. 2019. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Checking. Origi put it in, and so did he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that long. I seem to have lost, <laughs> I've had my confidence knocked down from prime Conor McGregor to a virgin in a brothel when talking to girls. I'm generally quite a funny and confident lad, and I'm reasonably handsome. Just absolutely crumble when it comes to chatting up the ladies. Any advice, lads? Keep up the good work, and Laura's gone for number one. Get me, he's finished this, in capitals, get me intercourse. Got, f- so, got a flat of their waist feature. Owen from Dundee, not getting his hole, Adam. First of all, getting he's to put a shirt on. Hole. If he doesn't know how to do it, I'll show him how to put a shirt on. A shirt. Yeah. That's the first... That was a great joke yesterday, you know. First bit of advice is a shirt. You put a shirt on. Right. Yeah, I'll show him how it's done. Anything else? Just a shirt. (laughs) Flatter the woman's worst feature. Flatter the woman's worst feature. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So go over to her. She's probably self-conscious about it, like, an enormous nose or a massive earlobe. Oh, God. And just flatter it. You should go over and go, oh, yeah. And I just fucking love that earlobe you've got there. (laughs) So you're going to find a girl in a nightclub in Dundee with big (laughs) earlobes? No, that's just an example. She could have big eyebrows and just swap out earlobe for eyebrow. Right. (laughs) So so Owen goes over in a shirt. He's got to put a shirt on. Right. Is that integral to the insulting her eyebrows? He needs to look smart. Yeah. Right. Smarten up. Eyeing it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll show him what's done. You going to Dundee or is this like a... I'll do do a tutorial for him when you see him. All right, cool. So he, he probably knows. How do you want to act it him. out? What? Do you want to act it out? Act out what? You're Owen. I'm the young lady. Yeah. So oh, first of all, love and night you want to get, get that attention and show your confidence. Hang on, I've got a little drink. Got a little porn star martini. Cool. Oh, I fucking hope I find. Oi, women! <laughs> Is that from two pints of lager? In a <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you want to see me what? knob? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> can hear that over the booming music of this Dundee nightclub. Frazzles. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to ad lib the name of a nightclub in Dundee. You've got to, you've got to. I don't think it's Frazzles. It's delicate, isn't it? Trying to chat up a girl, especially when you're nervous. Well, you've I'm, got to treat it like like a pie. I tell you what, this is what I'm going to do. A Not pie. Again. Okay, cool. Not again. I'm going to be a young lady, and I'm going to tell you when you've gone too far and you've lost my interest. Okay. When you hear this sound, <laughs> you've gone too far, Owen. Okay, so so every time, every time you, I will reset. I will so reset again. and start again. So, <laughs> boom, boom, can you put? Can we have some music? Like, come on, I get some sex music. Can I talk you through my process first? Bom, bom, bom. Can I'm I talk just, you through my tactics? I'm just a big earlobe bitch and fucking Dundee. It's like a pie, and you really want the pie. The ca- B- pie bitch has been dropped a lot recently. Is in like a cage. What do the pie do? With like lasers and. A cage pie. Kind like lasers and stuff. And right. you've got to reach in slowly. Right. 
and that's how you do it. You talk like the crown jewels of pies. Yeah, you do that. You just gotta be gentle, and you just like like stealing a pie. What kind of pie is this? What in potato? This is from what is this? The original pie, at, like Greg's HQ, that's got lasers <laughs> all around it. Yeah, right. That, that's what. It's like a caged pie. <laughs> Owen. Right, we're in the nightclub. Do you do fucking love? What's my name? Carl. What's my name? Bruce. No, listen. Oh, you're, you're the woman. Bruce. I don't enjoy anti oh, Scott's racist racism. Okay. Oh, you're the woman. Yeah. Um. Caroline. Caroline, fucking Caroline, by the way. I'm from Glasgow, apparently, because I can't do Dundee. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell them I'll get that important email over on Monday. Stop, stop, yeah. stop. First of all, tell you something about Frazzles on a Friday and Saturday night. It doesn't play whatever that was, Carl. What was that? Non-copyrighted music. So don't get it was non-copyrighted music. It was Spanish guitar. Yeah, it's live. I tell you what about Frazzles. We go for more of a fucking... No, Dancey pop vibe. Okay, play it, are we? Hello, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, they're going to up it to three billion and we get half each. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can barely hear you, lad. Just wire me with 1.5 billion by the morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you what you did wrong there. You need to stop talking about your own Patreon. <laughs> One day, maybe. No, I don't like the money thing. Why? No, I'm just telling you, she doesn't like it. Caroline's not into it. Okay, go on. Dry it up. Go again. Hello, lad. Yeah, fucking skint, mate. <laughs> I haven't got a penny to my name. <laughs> no, all right, I don't like the money thing, but I'll tell you what, Caroline doesn't want to be impoverished, yeah? Mm. I don't know what Dundee house prices are like. I imagine they're not that bad, but okay. Are you going with the, I'm talking to someone <laughs> trying to get laid? Is that your angle? Until I need to change I'll tell you something about Frazzles, basement club. Yeah. It's a basement club. Yeah. Very poor reception. Yeah. You on WhatsApp? Hello, lad. Yeah, FaceTime audio, lad. Best way I could get through to you. Yeah. Just want to let you know, I got the job. Bang median wage for Dundee. Right in the middle. The median wage. Yeah, yeah. Everything's going to be sound, but not too lavish. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is how you got it, Sam. <laughs> I have got a good income. <laughs> right, okay, that's good. So that's a bang medium ways. I'll be honest, I'm going to re retract the ding. That's a reverse ding. Mm. Okay. Not your next step. Get off the yeah. fucking phone, Owen. Oh, she's talking to me. <laughs> well, Frazzle just took a turn. I've wandered off to the rock room. <laughs> I've followed you. I'm just having a good night, hoping to find love. I need to know. I need to know. Are you on your own? I am, yeah. Turn off. I'm the DJ. <laughs> just turn it off. Are you on your own? Well, how intense would that be in a nightclub if you were like, <laughs> are you on your own? <laughs> Turn the music off! Hey, are you on your own? Uh, you're a rapist. A sound sensitive rapist. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on your own? I am, yeah. I've just come out looking for love. Oh, all right, girl. Porn star martinis, is it, yeah? Yeah, with the top on. <laughs> <laughs> love a porn star, me. Used to be a porn star myself, you know. Really, in Dundee? Enormous cock, me. Big cock. Yeah. What a sweet talker. Do you want it? <laughs> right. I like where you were going with it. We finally got away from LinkedIn Live, <laughs> where you chat aggressively to your bank manager. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you've gone a little bit... I like the porn star. He was like, wow. Because what you've done there well, Owen, just taking notes, I've been drinking porn star martini. <laughs> you've read that. You've linked it in. But you went, do you want my big dick? Too quick. <laughs> For Caroline. So I actually watched a video recently on TikTok of um, it's this woman who tells me are we in the nightclub. <laughs> Did you? I got. Are we in frazzles? Are we in frazzles? I actually watched this TikTok recently. Keep going. I watched this TikTok and it says a really good way to disarm women. Is, <laughs> I don't mean that like chip off. Yeah. Is is to offer uh, ask an opinion opener. That's what they call it. So don't go over and be like, "What's your name? Where you from?" You have to ask an opinion. Right, try, ready? Try, try, so you try, back, in, back in Frazzles. All right, girl. Hello. What do you think of Lorraine Kelly? <laughs> I think she's got a big dick. Yeah. What if Lorraine Kelly's a mum? Good point. It's Dundee. Okay. Could be. Okay. She's Scottish, isn't she? Mum okay, age. You ready? All right, girl. Are you Lorraine Kelly's mum? <laughs> no, I meant Lorraine Kelly could be Caroline's <laughs> mum. All oh, right. How old's Caroline? <laughs> Lorraine Kelly's <laughs> mid fifties. Adam, you dirtbag. Okay, all fucking right. big tuna. Right. All right, girl. <laughs> Hello. Do you know Lorraine Kelly? 
No. No. What do you think of her? <laughs> she's, she's, you know, a very good TV presenter and personality. How do you know that if you don't know her? I don't know her personally. Oh, I see what you mean. Miscommunication there. I have to work on that as the marriage goes on. This marriage? Yeah. Are you after a bit of commitment? I'm after some Scottish fucking Angus beef curtains. Is that a euphemism for my vagina? It is, yeah. And you're out. <laughs> right. <laughs> That was the longest you've lasted, though. Well done. Well, yeah. You've done well there. You want right. me to actually show you what I do? Yes! Back to Frazzles. She's pissed now, Caroline. She's fucking hammering this porn slot. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't big boy. Oh, now I'm getting flirty. Fuck, yeah. are you Adam Rule? No. I just look like him. <laughs> I'm actually a billionaire oh. who gives all his money to charity and leaves himself with the mean average income of, for Dundee of Scotland. Scotland, <laughs> yeah. all right, great. And that's it. so you're billionaire, and you've given me all your Charitable money. Charitable billionaire, and yeah. now you're in frazzles on a Friday. I'm in frazzles, yeah. Cool. Ah, uh, so far you have my interest, sir. Yeah, you got a little bevy on the. Do you want another one? Do you know what? I do. Yeah, I consent. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I have two more or whatever she's having. Eight shots of sambuca. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Didn't give away all your money, did you? Did I? No. Oh, I fucking like it. Let me fucking skin hey, next week. Uh, white or black? White. I'm black. <laughs> I'm in Sambuca, but I do like Rachel Banter. <laughs> and you're definitely not black. We're in Dundee. <laughs> so, uh, you got a boyfriend or? No, uh, recently. Uh, seen the new Transformers film? Recently <laughs> seen the new Transformers film. My uh, my husband was killed by a Transformer. Was he, yeah? Yeah. Ah, that's sad. Yeah. It's like James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. We're just skipping over my dead husband from a Transformer. I just don't want to bring up any trauma. That's probably quite nice. I like how this is going. Yeah, I like films. Do you? Yeah. I can watch a film at mine. <laughs> I don't know. When are you watching the film? Have a few drinks at mine. It's nice if you want. Can't have to load six Sambucas, lad. All right, good, because I was thinking eight Sambucas and then a film is a weird... Yeah, well, no, I've got Sambuca at mine. We'll have some of them and we'll watch uh, Space Jam 2. <laughs> He's a fucking paedophile. <laughs> No, I, that on a you know, that was the bet. That was the better of them. All he's right. done well there. Yeah, he's done well there. I think be delicate. A, opinion opener. Be nice. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask her before. to watch Space Jam two. Questions, questions, questions. They love talking about themselves. Yeah, questions. Just go why, and see what happens. Yeah. Don't ask them questions that they're used to getting at work. So find out whatever they do for a job, and if they work in like immigration, don't be asking them things like you know. I don't really immigration. Where are you from? Dundee immigration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Famous problem with Dundee immigration. You would like, like all maybe, them maybe. Norwegian immigrants trying to get in the country. Well, think about it. If if we if Dundee was known for having lax immigration rules, then everyone would just go there from Calais instead of coming to the south of the country. Yeah. So there's some advice to any of our refugee camp listeners and watchers in refugee camps in Calais. Just keep swimming. <laughs> Keep swimming. Oh, the access in Dundee. Keep swimming. They're swimming all the way to Round. Dundee. Yeah. You'll, you'll be tempted at Hull. Think again. <laughs> you'll see Newcastle. <laughs> keep swimming. And then the Firth of Forth. You've got to keep going. <laughs> then you'll hit Dundee. Don't swim. Piece of piss. Use the speed both. And enjoy frazzles <laughs> on a Friday night. Refugees. So, Owen, I hope that was helpful. I imagine it was incredibly helpful. Mm. That that went that bit went so long, I started enjoying the music. <laughs> Can we close it out? Can we close this episode out with uh, a little bit of Frazzles Friday night? Go and buy the pay-per-view if you haven't already. Hotwatercomedy.co.uk. It will be available. The link will be in the description as well. It'll be available till the 26th, which is Boxing Day. Um, have a good Christmas. Some shoes, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> some shoes here. They're, they're in the colours of the podcast. I think we should give them away. On oh, I don't want to on mention it here. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we've got a guest in today. Give it up for our guest. Ah, there wasn't one here. That was a joke. Elton John kills dogs. Kills dogs in his own pool. And you Caroline likes Space Jam 2. And her dead husband. And Sambuca. <laughs> what have we learned from today, guys? A lot. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. It's actually Chanukkah. Shh.
I have no words. I've used them all. Um, I need to go. Yep. Arrivederci. Go ahead. Mick, get on me. Her face was hollowing, you know.